Hello everyone, welcome back. We're gonna play some more Lone in the Dark. Um Sorry that we're starting a bit late. We were um We caught a late bus. We actually missed the bus we were gonna try and go with and uh that's why. But we're here now. Uh so Let's see, where were we in the story? We uh, had the amazing section where they went all meta on us with the uh, Frederick Renal um, reference. We had the fixed camera angle section. It's been firmly established that Edward is not experiencing the things that Emily is experiencing. Um, we're, we're very curious about what that means in, in the long run. And... Uh, Suddenly there was Prisoner of Ice references, and now we are on the coast of Greenland. Uh, it what seems to be a Prisoner of Ice inspired section, albeit in a different time period. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Uh, let's hop on in, shall we? Going to pour ourselves a drink. If it's too dark, by the way, we can maybe up the lighting on the... That looks fine. Really need to fix this monitor. Our second monitor that we have the stream stuff on is very dark. <clears throat> okay, let's go. <coughs> Sorry. Or okay, everything is fully loaded. Oh yeah, we got a flare gun. Cause this really is uh, Alan Wake. Okay, let's see what we find. Heading into the storm. Hopefully we don't get, end up getting stuck on any puzzles today. <laughs> Last stream was kind of unfortunate when we got stuck on a very simple puzzle. Light your way forward. Oh, you're probably supposed to fire the flare. Hold on. Where's the ammo on the fire actually? 18, no. 7. You see what happens if we. That's nice. That's pretty. Something over there. Just keep on following the force of the storm for now. With the direction of the storm. Something. Let's see shit here. Hold on. 
Where the fuck did that flare even go? Let's try and go up here. Prisoner of Ice was a 1995 or 6 Infogrames uh, point and click adventure game uh, set during World War II about a Lovecraftian alien that had crashed beneath the ice or uh, uh, around Greenland, and um, oh, this is where we're going. And um, it becomes this kind of like um, time travel adventure story. It's not a good game, really. Like it's pretty lousy. Especially compared to like the er the earlier infogrames, um, the Dodo titles like um, that of the Comet, which is much better, and of course the first Lunar Dark, which is way better. But it has its charm. That's one of the most absurd, badly designed endings in video games, though. Um, not to spoil the ending, but it's well, rather. It's it's one of those games where there's where there's we're stuck. There we go. It's one of the games where there's two endings, but like the way you um, pick your ending is deeply unnatural. We're just gonna spoil that the game is thirty years old almost. You just get two images at the end that you pick from, like a menu selection. It's just two images, like which ending do you want? Devoid of any context. Very strange. This is cool. Is that Jeremy? Someone else. Our health. Good. We're gonna switch back to the handgun. Not Jeremy. Jacob, okay. Jesus! He took no time to kill us. Uh, no hesitation. Okay. Got it. Get the shotgun ready just in case. We're gonna try and do melee combat though, because that seems fair. He hits hard. Oh, we forgot to pick up the um, flasks this time. Hopefully, we can do that after the fight. After the fight. Any, any other melee weapon here? We really want to do a melee, melee battle. Huh? 
that a bug? Oh, whoa, hello. Okay, so that, that throwing item works. Okay. Try that on. Where are you? Fuck! It's clearly supposed to be a throwing item here, but it's not, it hasn't spawned. Come on! We want to... We want to kill him with the pickaxe. Oh, more health items. Our drink is... Our drinks aren't increasing. You see that? A drink count stayed at two. Why is that? Glitched out? Can't go far back enough to pick up the paddle. Guess we're just gonna have to go with the shotgun blast to the face. That's a shame. It did not go up. Did it? Are you sure? But one, we but like. Okay. Fair enough. Did our throwable item spawn in yet? Okay, come on. This is the second time we get stuck in the geometry in this place. There. I don't know, but the arrow disappeared. Tight lid. Okay. All of these tight lids, we guess. Thing? No. Okay. Thing. Whoa. Uh, hello, Emily. Oh, it's a giant version of the talisman. Cool. Oh, but what are we setting it to? The dark man is going to be in the middle of your existence, Jeremy. And at least set everything in order. Where even is the... Okay, hold on. done? How was your Easter? Well, we didn't really do anything for Easter. Well, okay, that's not true. We painted an egg. We, we, we paint, painted an octopus on an egg. Yeah, that was kind of fun. Uh, other than that, we uh, watched Orange is the New Black for the first time. Currently in the second season.
Oh, we need to stab it. Okay. Just like the prowl. What the fuck? Come on. The reach on those tentacle arms are... Well, not even tentacles, but like... You know. You know what I mean. Arm whips. The theater? Oh, what did you watch? Are you fucking serious right now? We dodged the first hit. How did the second hit kill us? We were basically full health. Again, you can't dodge while reloading. Oh, we're back in the uh, Egyptian temple. Well, we're back in the house. Oh, we're back in the. the ta 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 away? That was what it was called? Just tumbling down. Oh no! We killed Jeremy Hartwood! Okay, interesting. Hold on, we need to ch change our chat to live chat rather than top chat because there are messages that are, that are missing. Chapter 5. Most of my queer. Yeah, that tends to be the case in the theater circles. <laughs> Hi, Grace. Are you gonna do something fucked up? 
again. Are you alone? Or is he in there with you? Miss Hot, what is up? Heard you almost painted the foyer with your own blood and guts. <laughs> Good to see you still in one piece. Stick around, will you? It's going to be an exciting. Good to see you made it, miss. And all that ruckus, a lot of give you a healthy dose of that sleeping juice. Wasn't sure you'd be waking up again. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Tried to shoot yourself. Sorry for the manhandling, but we just wanted to save you. You also stabbed Jeremy in the eye. Is he all right? Mm, he's a little strange, but everything else <laughs> Wait, is Wait, Jeremy is okay? Like, well... Really? Probably. I broke the pack. Not okay. I don't know but... what you did, but it worked. Let's see you standing up, Miss. That's good. That's good. You know, we didn't dodge his suicide just to kill him, but you know. Jeremy, are you okay? I'm so sorry for hurting you. How can you ever forgive me? Emily, I missed you so. I do hope you'll stay with me for a while. Uncle, what's wrong? Is it anesthesia? He, he seems so meek. I wish that was the case. It turns out that you managed to lobotomize him. It's actually quite impressive considering your technique. This is permanent? You sacrificed a piece of his mind to save the whole. It's a little like treating a bad knee by cutting off the leg. It's blunt. But it works. That's terrible. Perhaps. But at least he won't suffer anymore. Do you remember the dark man, Jeremy? Ah, yes. Where did he go? I hope he is doing all right. You see? With a violent stab, you made any future treatment quite redundant. I assume you will be bringing him with you back to New Orleans. I will. I just need to find Detective Crombie. Very interesting. I'll be back soon, Jeremy. Then we'll go back to the city. How fun. I do like riding in the motor car. Is there any chance he'll relapse back to his previous condition? None at all. He is forever cured from all worries and other difficult feelings. Have you seen Detective Carnby? I'm sure he's around here somewhere, poking and prodding. Okay, so it seems they've changed what rooms are locked again. Can't go many places. We can go to the library. Maybe to the small parlor from there. But it seems they really want us to go into the conservatory. Hey, look, our girlfriend's here. Stop everything. Hello. Oh, sorry, we missed the talking marker there. Well done, Miss Hartwood. You officially made Dorsetto the dullest place in existence again. Oh, thank you. Happy to be of service. Have you seen Detective Carnby anywhere? <laughs> Still chasing that lovable palooka around, are you? I'm sure you'll find him. Can I write to you when I get back to town? <laughs> you are too sweet, Miss Hartwood. 
I'll look forward to reading all about your tedious routine. Yeah, Ellie is smitten. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, wait, what? Okay, we cannot go into the library. We can only go down towards the tree. Fucking tree. Goddamn tree. Do not trust the tree. Hello. Good to see you're still with us, miss. Are you hungry? Uh. No, thank you. I'm still a bit woozy. Do not trust stews in a lonely dark game. Ooh, is that gumbo? I make it every year. We set up a little feast by the wishing tree and start a new year together. We don't know if gumbo is due or not. We're uncultured. Have you seen Mr. Carnby? I haven't seen him for a while. Maybe he left. Or to Batiste. Looks like a storm's coming. Radio says it could get real bad. Floodings and such. I should probably get moving before the weather gets worse. Have you seen Detective Carnby? Not for a while, but he says he's gonna wait for you. Take care, Batiste. You too, Miss Emily. Do you know what's about to happen here? Oh, just a little ceremony we do each year on the eve of St. John. We raise our glasses to the old wishing tree here and ask for a better year. Is it all for show? Or do you actually believe the tree can help? Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. some of us do. I mean, Lottie and Mags are pretty invested. Taking it a little too far, you know. Sounds like you might be in a cult. <laughs> yeah, I can see how you think that. All right, let's talk to Lottie. That should be everyone. We can get the. There. I almost forgot this was here. Very hard to settle, you know. Almost time to call on her. What is it that you do? Is it like the voodoo rituals you read about in the papers? I don't know, miss. I never saw one up close. My family has always been suspicious of the hoodoo. You haven't seen Detective Carnby, have you? No, and I hope he stays away. I don't think he would understand what is about to happen here. Okay, there's apparently something here. So let's talk to Grace first. Hello, Grace. What are you doing? Preparing for the ceremony. This time she will come. I'm sure of it. Who's coming, Grace? The black goat of the woods. The mother of a thousand young. I hope you find what you're looking for, Grace. Whatever it is that you need. That's a terrible thing to say. Okay. All right. Wait for the hit to Carnby. Let's do a double check first. We didn't miss anyone to talk to. But no. 
I uh, think everyone who is still alive is here. And we've spoken to all of them. Let's go! Everyone knows what to do? Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Folks, good or bad, we need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. There are praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Ever there Ever praises, there praises, 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 praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, hear us, hear us, 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 What are you doing? This is madness! This heals what he's She's just a child! Get out, Emily! We're leaving! No! Hell yeah! What did we say about the tree? First stream! In like a first hour of the game! And they actually did it! They fucking went Alone in the Dark 1 on it, but with an Alone in the Dark 2008 twist on it. Oh, we love this game! It, it appreciates its own legacy even when it's like less popular aspects. We love that shit. We got rid of Pregsd. Like the actual backstory of Ezekiel Briggs from um, the original game, but they kept the tree, and you know what? That's better. That it's Hello, Carlos. Everything in its way. Um. Okay. I only have two flasks. We would really like more than that. God, this is gruesome! Look at that! Holy fuck! Jeez! Oh no, our girlfriend's dead! Yeah, we want to do a save, recent gameplay on the past, uh... Let's just do the full 30 minutes there. Uh, because we, uh... We want all the Emily and Ruth scenes saved. And there was one before she died, so... Uh, okay. Okay. Your map is of new use here. Okay. Where are we going? All the paths are like broken off. This makes us think that the uh, Edward stuff is actually connected, plot-wise. 
and that he's just been playing it cool, and we're very much looking forward to see how that, what, what that looks like. Damn. Where are we supposed to go? Up here, maybe? Ah. <gasps> are we doing platforming? No. No, we're not. Uh, for a second there, we thought it was going to be a real Illuminar dark game. We love this game. Let's be clear. This might actually be the best Illuminar dark game. Uh, we're going to see how we feel about it when it's not brand new. But, um... It is so, we think it's so funny to say this is not a real Lone the Dark game because it's just not platforming. But just technically, like, you can define the original Lone the Dark series by platforming. <laughs> that was in all, all of the original three games. Lots of health drinks. We're about to face a boss, huh? <sighs> All right, Shubnigarath. See what you go for. Just pure damage. Wait, no, there's like a swelling. Aiming is not this game's best part. There we go. New weapon, nice. Oh no, a mob face. No, we wanted to hit on the... Can you help? Can you help? There. Oh, the legs.
But yeah, uh, Lovecraftian, uh, like original Lovecraftian stories that don't center Cthulhu are cool. M honestly, most of the um, original in our timeline stuff that deals with Cthulhu mythos stuff doesn't do that. The only one it does is actually, um, well, a cult devoted to Cthulhu is mentioned in the first Lonely Rock, uh, but um, the only game that's about Cthulhu is the Lonely Rock Illumination, which is Lonely Rock 6, um, the last one. Oh fuck, fuck's sake! We really hate these small fuckers. health use. We are super dead. Yeah, Shadow the, we, from what we recall, Shadow the Comet and Prisoner of Ice doesn't do the Cthulhu thing either. Like, most of the games called Call of Cthulhu are actually not about Cthulhu. It's just that, you know, they call that because of the Chaosium uh, role-playing game. You gotta like pay attention to this box. Are there any swelling up right now? I'm not seeing any. Is it just a mob face? Just a mob face. Okay. Oh, I hate those tiny ones. They're so difficult to shoot. Oh shit, were we at low health? Yeah, we said this before, but we really don't like third person shooters on controller. Um, unless they control like the original Resident Evil 4. 
where it's about like stopping and then like you you aim around the screen rather than in the middle of the screen. Um, but our PC can't handle this game or any modern game anymore. So controller is mandatory, even though we suck at it. I don't think we can use the debris to hit the swellings. Like, it's like, that's the thing, like, it gets stuck like that. No, we cannot. Okay. We can use the gun, not with. Machine gun ammo. Game just for the mobs. Stay spot as long as it doesn't whip against us. Not bad. Take it. Yeah, no swelling, so this is definitely just an ad face. Pick up. Throw the item. Hit us! Another tiny one. The tiny ones hit so fucking hard. Oh. And we're fucked. We can't reload fast enough. Where's the tiny motherfucker? There. Okay. This is going bad. Legs. Right. Turn around, you motherfucker! There. I'm running low on pistol ammo too. It's another ad face.
get it? No, we didn't. Ah, oh, fuck you. Fuck you! Oh, we got health drink. Nice. Didn't know that we actually respawned. That actually helped a lot. I wish the enemies had friendly fire or something, that would help. That, that, would, that would make this fight way more reasonable. Oh, uh, fuck. Oh, fuck! The ad face done? Cool. Pick up some likes. Ow! You motherfucking slapped me! What? Alright, we have not been beating this yet. Um Emily, are you alright? I don't understand anything that just happened. What was that? The whole gang was a cult dedicated to something called the Black Goat of the Woods. I've been trying to gather as much information as I could. It was only after you started talking about monsters that I thought. Maybe there was some truth to all the nonsense I was finding. Where's Jeremy? Uncle! Are you alright? Everything is out of order. This isn't the way the story goes. I shouldn't be alive. Don't say that. You made it out. Be happy. Okay? Hey, kid. You doing all right? It wasn't what I expected, but you can't always get what you want. All right, you ready to head back to New Orleans? Come on, Jeremy. Let's go. Can I come? Don't leave her. You have to take it a hell God! That, okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Jeremy, Jeremy, we love that you're doing references to the original series of games. Alone Knock 2 takes place before Alone Knock 1, though, so that's, that's already happened, actually. <laughs> uh, okay. First of all, where was that late in Emily's story stealth sequence that was so hard? In fact, where was the stealth sequences that were so bad? There was one stealth sequence we sort of struggled with, but it was not difficult. It took like two or three attempts, and it was not very long, and it had checkpoints. God, you have no idea, by the way, how how uh, jealous we are that like the new Alone in Dark game is made by Swedish developer, and we weren't involved. Like, why would we be? Obviously, we're nobody with like no real um, industry merits to speak of. But we've been so devoted to this franchise since you know. We were like four years old. Um, God, this is good though. 
This is really good. This is a good game. This might be the best Alone in the Dark game. Uh, and we know that some people will be like, well, that doesn't say much. But like, no, it does. It does. For someone like us, it actually does mean a lot. Um... Great game. Really good game. Better than Inferno? Impossible. Okay, well, first of all, we like Inferno. Although it is the worst version. It is the worst version of the HD Alone in the Dark games. Um, we actually have a bit of a story with that uh, from just the past few days. Uh, guess we can take. Guess we can tell that now while we wait for the credits to end. So. Uh, so Alone in the Dark Inferno is the PS3 version of Alone in the Dark 2008, right? It was delayed uh, like six months, five, six months. And they changed a bunch in the game to appeal to um, um, uh, the criticism. The game received, right? Um, however, some of those changes are bad, and the game runs like shit. Like it performs really badly, uh, and we're guessing that's why it was delayed. Probably, like they couldn't get it to run well, but they already had like some kind of. Um, they already announced it for PS3, like Atari wanted it to be on PS3. Atari wanted it on everything, after all, it was on Wii and PS2 as well. Um, so they probably had like some kind of obligation, because uh, it runs much worse than the 360 version. But like, they changed things, like, they changed so that you have camera control uh, in the third person mode, which you don't in the 360 version. That might sound like a good thing, like, oh, you can control the camera, right? Everyone wants to control the camera. Problem is, the game is built around this classic tank control system, uh, including with like a basic like um, 180 degree turnaround action, and and you're always like meant to have Carmi facing forward because then you switch to first person, it just smoothly goes into first person. In Inferno, that's not the case. Because the first person does not adhere to the camera of third person, it adheres to what, where Combi is facing. Which means, you can be heading in one direction, trying to aim at something, know where you're going, going to first person, you flip the 180 degrees, now you have slower camera control, so you switch back to third person, but then you get flipped the 180 degrees, and it's just like, it's very confusing, it's bad, it causes a lot of problems. Um... There are some cool things about it. They got rid of battery packs. The flashlight is always 100% battery powered. That's a good change. No one likes the battery packs. It's silly, it doesn't really fit, and it just takes up a spot in your inventory at all times. Uh, there's a new boss, it's like two minutes long. It's fine. Um, there's like some checkpoints added to like the chase scenes, we think. We don't need those, so we haven't noticed them when we're playing it right now. But we do think they're there. Um, there's a new cutscene showing off the roots earlier in the game, so you start burning roots earlier. You, you also need to burn fewer roots to beat the game. Uh, like, it does have some improvements, but overall, it's worse to play than the original release. Now, we are currently playing this because we want the Platinum Trophy on PS3. And before we left to... Um, uh, before we left for um, board games on Thursday, uh, we were doing some uh, route hunting in this game. The thing you do right before the last part of the game 
uh, when you get access to the entire map and you're just burning roots. We're trying to clear that up. We did about half the, no, we did more than half the roots. Uh, and then we kept dying on this one section. Spawning outside of this room that starts with you having to like blow something up to open a door. Uh, and that uh, door can be finicky. Sometimes it doesn't open right. But like we blew it up, we went inside, we died, start outside, have to blow it up again, etc, etc. Right? Okay. That's all well and good. One time we died and the explosion didn't open the door. And we didn't have anything to make a new explosion with. So we thought, well, we're just going to hit load, load save file, right? And we will get back to the same part that we get to when we die. Obviously dying and loading the checkpoint should have the same effect. No, it doesn't. Loading, manual loading always takes you back to the latest story checkpoint. So we lost about an hour, maybe more, of progress and I have to do that all over again. So we're, we're, we're kind of we're, we're kind of we're kind of mad about this game right now. Normally we're this game's biggest fan, we're the one we're the one who always defends it. Uh, well, at least this version. Uh, right now we're kind of pissed at it. What's our opinion on the Alone in the Dark movies? Well, first of first off, thank you for asking, and thank you for saying movies, plural, not just movie. The Alone in the Dark movies. <laughs> Of course, we have them ready. Uh, so yeah, there's two Alone in the Dark movies. Uh, here's the first one. Uh, Alone in the Dark. Uh, tag on the back is Resident Evil was just the beginning. Which is really fucking ironic, considering Alone in the Dark came first. But movie-wise, it did not. Uh, being afraid of the dark is what keeps you alive. Christian Slater, Steven Dorff, Tara Reid. We love- let's bring up, bring up the camera mode. There we go. We love that they had to write, like, what other movies the actors were in. Um, but yeah, Alone in the Dark. The Uwe Ball directed Alone in the Dark movie. Uh, this movie... ...is watchable. I'm not gonna say it's good. Nowhere near good. But it's watchable. Pretty fun to watch. And something that annoys us with this, right, is... Hold on, let's see. A bunch of people love to get all smug and smartass about this film. And be like, wow, this has nothing to do with about the Lone in the Dark. It has nothing to do with Lone in the Dark. They just took the name Edward Carnby and that was it. It has nothing to do with this game, Lone in the Dark. And like, yeah. Yeah. Because... The, the game is a sequel to this Alone in the Dark game. It's a direct sequel. Like, 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 seriously. This game leads into this film. It's absolutely based on Alone in the Dark. You just don't know what you're talking about. Uh, the character of Aline Sedrak, Tara Reid's character, is from this game. He's one of the main characters. It's not just Edward Carnby. Like, this is a sequel. It's not a good sequel. But, like, these two are related. And that's because this was the latest game. This was the game that came out shortly before Uwe Ball acquired the license. So, like, uh, Uwe Ball based... Uwe Ball and the screenwriters based it... Based the film on this game. That's a reasonable thing to do. Now, while they were making this film, development started on Alone in the Dark 2008. Um, and originally, there was going to be more of a overlap there, even though Alone in the Dark 2008 was a sequel to the original uh, games. Um, they were going to have the main character look more like Christian Slater in that game. If you watch the original uh, announcement trailers for Alone in the Dark 2008, from like the X06, X05 event and stuff like that, um, he looks different from how he looks in the final game. Uh, and we showed that off in our Alone in the Dark 2008 playthrough last year. If you watch that, we showed it off there. We showed the various screenshot comparisons, we watched the old trailers, etc. etc. Now, the second film 
Here it is. Alone in the Dark uh, 2. Are you still afraid of the dark? Uh, okay, so this one. <laughs> this film is watchable. This one is not. This one is much worse. Um... <laughs> But we do feel we need to, like, actually, like, get some more details right here. One sec. Um, yeah. This one is not directed or written by Uwe Boll. It is directed and written by uh, Peter Schreer. Schreer, perhaps. And uh, Michael Roche. Roche. Not entirely sure. Uh... This one wants to be more like 2008. It's set in Central Park. That's basically all, 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 all the only thing they brought over. Uh, Edward Carnby is now played by Rick Yoon. Uh, it's not a sequel to this, but it's called Alone in Dark 2. Uh, it's... Yeah, it's... It's an odd one. It's about a witch. Which, you know... There was a witch in Alone in the Dark 2. <laughs> so it has that in common. Uh, the back of this DVD case is funny. Long awaited adaptation from notorious Blood Rain director Uwe Ball based on the hugely popular video game. First off, this is not an adaptation. Like, it's not. It's not. Uh, like, you can maybe argue this one is because at least it tries to be adapted as a sequel to Lone Dark and New Nightmare, but, like, this is not an adaptation at all. It's not. Uh, from Notorious Blood Rain director Uwe Boll. Yeah, okay, he was producer on it, technically. But he didn't direct this. It's not really from him. Based on a hugely popular video game. This came out in 2000... Eight. Which means these were the games they're referring to. They were not popular. Sequel to the top selling horror film Alone in the Dark. It's not a sequel to that film. Also, this was a top selling horror film, really? You know, that we get we can buy that actually. This was this was this was an international feature film released in theaters. It was the first thing for Uwe Ball, which normally was a, it had much, a much more limited release. But still, this film, this film is unwatchable. Um, yeah, not good. Neither of these films, as far as we know at least, have been re-released on Blu-ray. So, like, DVD is the only way to watch them. Um... Actually, we think the first one might have had a VHS release, but yeah, it's, um, someday we'll do a video or something on these films. <laughs> Mainly because no one watches the second one, but... Okay. Anyway, that was fun. 8 hours and 47 minutes for Emily's story. That's not bad. Shall we do, uh, so how does this work? Hold on, we want a, um, we're just gonna open this up and, um... Do a manual save game. For the end of Emily's story, just in case we want it. And now... Let's check out Edward's story, shall we? Uh, yeah, let's just keep it the standard for now. Old school. Here's Odyssey, yes, thank you. This game actually warns you about your autosaves. That's kind of it. Alone in the Dark Inferno.
Yes, yeah, so we think this might actually be the best Elden in the Dark game. Like, it feels odd saying that, because, like, the first game is so dear to our heart. But, like, we can't deny is the way that this game is just really solid. Uh, and it, it basically does everything right, you know? And that's rare. So, your uncle. What's wrong with him? He's possessed. As in the devil? Something like that. He says a dark man is following him. Watching him at all times. What do you make of it? It's nonsense, of course. But I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. You see, it runs in my family. Possession? No, detective. Deteriorating melancholy. Practically every member of the Hartwood family is driven mad before they grow old. I'm very curious about, like, if the if, if this is planned as, so, like, a standalone thing. single story. Is that why is that your spell? Or if they had thoughts in mind to, like, being convinced that he is truly possessed, follow up on this. Last chips on Dr. Um, psychoanalysis, figuring you might stumble upon some cure. Does this kind of feel very self-contained, right? And we kind of respect that about it. I received a disturbing letter from Jeremy accusing the staff and all the other patients of being involved in some cult. And now they are also out to keep him. Could it be real? Or is it all just in his head? It's a story he tells himself, Mr. Carnby. Anything to avoid the truth. Which is? That we're all terribly insignificant. That people mean so very little to one another. That there is no one out to get Jeremy Hartwood because he isn't worth getting. Here we are. One of the complaints we had about the game before it came out, when they announced it, was we didn't like the decision to My change their setto to just I want to make sure he's all right. a then place where partner. Jeremy lived to Between like a, a mental health asylum. Wouldn't feel safe because there's too many horror stories set in asylums already. But we actually kind of like what they did with it. They actually kind of they, they made that work too. Like if, every you like yeah. thing that we didn't care yeah, for, that we didn't cool. like about the announcement of this game, kind of got reversed on us. Like we like it now. Exception being Carnby's design. Like exactly sorry. what are we gonna do when we find Jeremy? I don't know. Let's just find him first. Well, Uber Ball. So here's the thing with Uber Ball, right? Uber Ball is not a good director. He's not a good storyteller. Um, he's not as bad as people say he is. He's notorious and loud, and because he did so many video game films in close proximity to each other, he became the target for it. But almost every single time there was a sequel to an Uwe Boll film that Uwe Boll didn't do, it's worse. Like, um, there are other ones. It's, there's not just Alan the Dark. There was another one. One of the Blood Rain films that he didn't direct, we think, is by far the worst one. We think it's Blood Rain 2. There's, there are three Blood Rain films, but it's that that one is also just unwatchable. Uh, House of the Dead too. Holy shit! House of, like House of the Dead is probably Ball's worst film. House of the Dead two is like much worse. It's also called Dead Aim for some reason, which is a Resident Evil subtitle, but okay. Uh, actually, no, we take it back. House of Dead is probably not the worst one he did, but it's up there. It, it's, it's, it's one of the worst. Uh, they did also do um, the In the Name of the King sequels, didn't he? Paul W. Sanderson. Oh. No, the video game Curse in Cinema dates back to before they were doing things. And remember, Paul W.S. Anderson 
did the first Mortal Kombat film, which to this date is generally considered one of the good ones. Um, but like in the 90s, Super Mario Brothers, Street Fighter, Double Dragon. Like you had all of these um, video game films that were made because a brand was successful by people who did not respect video games or care much for them. Like they didn't play video games, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, like you don't need to be like a huge fan of something to make it, make it to to retell a story well or tell a good story. But we think there was a lack of respect there in general, where the thought was like, oh, that's just a game. Anything else we do with it will be better by comparison because games are like just beneath us. And this has only sort of gotten reversed in more recent years. Uh, movies like the Sonic film. The Sonic film are made by people who clearly grew up loving the games. Even though they have like, um, the first one has a very like atypical, uh, sorry, atypical, not atypical. It has, it has a very typical um, standard, let's adapt the child thing for a, a family cinema audience concept. Like, oh, what if Sonic was adapted by this family and they go on this road trip? Like, like, it, like it's it, it sounds really bad, but they filled it with so much clear love and respect for the franchise's history and showing that like, hey, we we actually do care about these things. We actually care about these characters. We know what we're doing. We're not just treating them as the brand because it's a brand. You know? This is also the case with Rampage. Rampage is a pretty excellent film. Like, it's it took well, it's a pretty um uh a pretty like stripped back concept in terms of like a narrative. Hey, what if these kaiju are around destroying a city? And it made sure that all the key elements of that was there. Everything you might find recognizable in Rampage is there. They told a story around that rather than forego it, just do something else. Uh, which happened a lot in the 90s and even in the 2000s. Uh, there was another one recently that was good like that. Sorry, we're kind of like... I don't remember what other video game film recently was good. But there was another one that actually like surprised us with how good it was. Yeah. And thank you for talking about that video game is a bad, usually a movie Anderson and Ball worked on. Yeah, well, Anderson, so like Anderson did, we don't like Anderson's movies, let's be clear about that. Um, we think he is worse than Ball, personally. But people like the first Mortal Kombat, and we do too. The first Mortal Kombat is pretty fun. But like, he did so many Resident Evil films in a row, you know? He basically just did a bunch of, bunch, of, bunch of Resident Evil films. And then he made the Monster Hunter film, which is god-awful. But... Like, that was kind of it. He was going to do a Castlevania film at one point, but he didn't. Um... I, mean, I don't think he did anything else, video game-wise, than those, right? Are we forgetting something? We don't think he did any other, other ones in the 2000s. Yeah, Detective, Detective Pikachu is good. That's another one that clearly, that clearly like respected the source material. And again, we don't know if the if the like screenplay author or director are Pokemon fans, but they respected the source material, and that's that matters a lot. Um, but yeah. Okay, let's do Edward Carnby's story. Like, oh, interesting. Hello? Hello? It looks abandoned. It can't be. There has to be someone around. Okay, yeah, so it's not a, um... Wait here. Like, the same story is identical. 
Like it, it's not a case of two ident of two uh, unique stories that always happen the same way because now now Edward is going going in the way Emily went in. Also, like t okay, well, more like t take the Super Mario Bros. film for example, right? That's the kind of film that like when you when you just watch it, it feels like how did this happen? This makes no sense. But what probably happened was some screenwriter got like just some notes about what Super Marvelous is about. And it's like, oh, it's about these plumbers. They jump around and they fight a dinosaur. Now, what do we got here? And if you, if you just have that, you know, kind of makes sense, right? Like okay, that that's that's in the film. The film is about that. You look at like um, it could also have been like various mandates from like Nintendo of America or something like that. Like for example, uh, when the Sonic film was trying to be made, when they tried to make a Sonic film in the nineties, Sega was adamant about like. Uh, like that that Sonic should be like a mascot on an air uh on like a um Air Force bomber jacket and a pilot should have worn it. And that's how Sonic was known as an icon. And that's the thing that comes from like um a version of um Nah, I'm not getting in there. Um Sonic story that like wasn't really a thing outside of Japan. It was like this version of the Sonic story where like Sonic it was like it was like a story within a story. Mm. Like this 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 kid like whose dad was in the Air Force or something and had like Sonic on his jacket and it, it, it was odd and like for some reason they really wanted that to be in the film. But it led to like uh, like the first known Sonic film pitch, which we've talked about this on stream before because it was recently unearthed and they read through it. Um, That's one big tree to fit inside a and like, it became a story about this kid transforming into a hedgehog beast. <laughs> and it's just. Okay. Can we see our um, planet? Oh, yeah, cool. They actually are kept. Every day your silence weighs a little heavier. It's been a difficult e Yeah, there's so there's, there's like a live reading of the draft from that uh, version of the story. You can find on YouTube, um, like streamed on Twitch a couple of months ago, weeks ago, uh, and it's basically a fucking horror film. It's ridiculous. Uh, we've talked about it in more detail before. We don't remember everything right now, but like Robotnik isn't named Robotnik. He's named like all. Like Paul Eastman or something like that, and he's like a he's like he's like a violin. He was like a child violinist who was born without fingers, so he has like mechanical robot fingers attached to like a stump hand. It's it's a choice. The film is a choice. It's a series of choices.
I don't think he's a feminist in the film version, no. No, we hate. We hate how much people still spread that that's a mistranslation. There's literally no grounds for calling that a mistranslation. The key. It's literally just that a bunch of people, a bunch of shuds in like 2006 was like, no, we can't have feminism in a video game, so clearly it has to be a mistranslation and they meant, they meant womanizer. Because, you know, Robotnik, fam famed womanizer, right? Like, what? No. Like, it's, it's literally like a part of, of the bio where they're like, just trying to like, puff up Eggman as this cool guy, you know? Um, but... Yeah, no, because like... What well, well, that is, like, the feminist bit, it, it's actually from a Sonic X uh, bio, originally. Please do not touch the boiler. It is working, after all. While the savage... That doesn't make sense. Huh. Yeah, people try to... So many people try to be like, uh... Oh, actually, in Japan, feminism means to be a womanizer, or like, like some kind of like, uh, um, chivalrous person, maybe. And it's like, n like there is there is a variant of feminism in Jap in Japanese that has been used that way. Yes, this bio was written in two thousand three. It's not that. <laughs> Was a fair bad video game movie? Um, well, you, you know us. We don't like to call something we like bad. Uh, but we're guessing you mean in the like general reception sense. Uh, and in that case, it's probably. The Resident Evil movies, the Resident Evil movies are god awful. They're horrible. They're, they are so fucking bad. No. 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 Heresy in the chat. Jeez, no. Um. Sunday, June. Fucking goddamn. The Risen Deal films are so goddamn horrible. Uh. Uh, where were we? Um, uh, Resident Evil, the, the, hold on, the fifth Resident Evil film is kind of funny. That's as far as we'll go. But, no, no, the one we like the best of the so-called bad uh, video game films uh, I mean, they're all considered bad in like critic size. Uh, aren't they? Like, we actually have a rankings list. Hold on, hold on. We do have a we we do we do have a ranking of video game films. Um, live action video game adaptations, best to worst. Okay, so let's see. Which one here is actively considered horrible? Oh, okay, that's easy. Uh, Doom Annihilation. The second Doom film. That one's, that, that one's, that, that one's good. The only crime of that film, like the only thing that's bad about that film, is it's really low budget, and they wrote a script for a higher budget film. They can't live up to their own budget. Well, they can't live up to what they need. Thanks. Okay, uh, welcome to Raccoon City. What we haven't you? seen. Who are you? Whoa, pardon me. Excuse me. My name is Edward Carnby, private investigator. I hope you don't mind. We let ourselves inside. I do mind. This is private property. You can't just barge in here. I'm sorry about all this, but I'm looking for my uncle. It's urgent, and no one was answering the door. We can't hear you knocking anymore. 
None of us can. Who is your uncle, darling? Jeremy. Am I right? She has that Hartwood gloom, doesn't she? That's right. I'm Emily Hartwood. I just came to make sure my uncle is all right. Well, he is unavailable right now. He will have to come back another day. Unavailable? How? Is he sleeping? We can wait. He's lost. Don't I know you from somewhere? Who's your man again, Miss Hartwood? My name's Edward Carnby. Private investigator. Splendid. Enough! All of you, get back to your rooms. The coffee, keep your eyes on the child. And you two, please leave immediately. Look, we're not here to cause any trouble. Just let us see the old man, satisfy the curiosity of my client here, and we'll be off. Jeremy has gone missing. There's no need to worry, but it might be some time before he turns up. The whole staff is looking for him. What? He ran off? I don't have time for any of this. Please, come back tomorrow. All right, in that case, we'll just wait in his room. You don't mind, do you? It's upstairs, right? Wait, you can't. Don't worry, we'll be discreet. In the corridor, it's the first door on your left. I'll tell Dr. Gray you're here. Excellent, thank you, madam. We like this, the scenes are very different depending on which character you play as. Uh, it's like it's like Sonic Adventure. We like it. <laughs> uh, okay, we have been reading. The, we have been reading the chat. We're gonna respond to part of parts of it in a sec. We just want to watch the new cutscene here. I'm curious if Ruth is gonna flirt with Edward as well. If she's by. See if we can dig up. We're guessing that's the case, but we'll see. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Is the first Doom movie considered bad? I thought it was alright, says Emily. Uh, it's considered pretty bad, yeah. Uh, personally, we're not a big fan of it. Uh, we think it looks great. Uh, it has really good visuals. Uh, but the story kind of sucks. The characters are all frustratingly awful. Uh, not just like in the badly written sense, but in the bad to watch sense like it's not fun to see them do anything uh the second film is much better with that we wish that we wish the second film had the first film's budget if that was the case it would be amazing the only people who would hate it then are the people who are pissed that it's it stars a doom girl and not a doom guy you know that's apparently a bad thing. Um, what could the recruiting see mixes the plot of the first and second RE games, but it's messy, but it's hard to read place. Yeah, we, we know. We, we know what it's about. Um, and we do have it. We haven't, I just haven't seen it yet. Uh, the, honestly, our, while, while we haven't seen it yet, we can't comment on it, it feels like it might be a Doom Annihilation thing um, where it seems very low budget. From the trailer, uh, like the, the 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 effects look pretty bad, uh, but we'll see. Maybe it's fun. We liked the animation. We thought it was really good, so we can we can look past that if 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 it's like oh, he's smoking. Cool. Um, let's see. Uh, hard to say the first two movies badly written because they didn't have all much dialogue to begin with. That's not true. There's a lot of expository dialogue in that film. Um, they talk all the time in that film, actually, and but even then, that's not that's not everything that writing is in the end. Like the way the story unfolds doesn't really make any sense, and like it feels like they weren't sure what story the film they were writing needed to have, but they just like. They wrote a series of events and then stuck in a story afterwards. It's kind of awkward. Um, great monster designs, though. Really good monster designs. Okay.
Anything important I should look out for? Did he keep a diary? Not that I know of, but it wouldn't surprise me. Quite the artist, your uncle. Paintings, sculptures. I don't know much about modern art, but he seems dedicated. Jeremy is a fairly well-known landscape painter in New Orleans. You've probably seen more of his work than you realize. Street Fighter, the movie, is really fun. Uh, it kind of drags in the middle, but apart from that, it's really fun, yeah. We should go talk to the doctor that the housekeeper mentioned. The first Silent Hill film was really good, too. Right? Okay, I suppose. Let's just do a little more digging first, okay? Sure. No rush. This is interesting. Uh, they made Edward... Like... He seems very nice and likable. Every night the doctor... And uh, that's cool. Let's start by saying we're cool with that. But it does not reflect how Edward is... Uh, referred to in the original game, nor the sequels. Uh, so it's an interesting change. Uh, hey, you know anything about this? Looks like some sort of talisman. No, I don't. Oh, help me out here, will you? Now, would it kill the guy to throw some of this stuff out? I'd be crazy too if I had this much junk lying around. <laughs> the second World Cup movie is it's it's a fun watch. For sure. Oh, wow. That's striking. I want to save this one. Interesting. She got the um, painting from, from a different place this time. No, the one that came out uh, a few years ago is, is the reboot. That's the third one. Um, that one's apparently getting a sequel. We like that one too. That one was good. Come on, let's go. Yeah, I'm coming. You know, we actually like this game so much that we want to it's buy hard. the um. The retro Emily? character DLC, even though we're opposed to the practices of putting it as DLC. Um, we want to play through the game as actual regular Edward first before we do that. What the hell is going on? Where am I? Yeah, okay. It seems that like they're switching place in the story, but like that can't be the case all the way through, right? Because the story becomes very personal for Emily the further you go in. In a way, it can't really be for Edward. So we're looking forward to see um, how that changes, you know? Kind of interesting. Okay, so because uh, Edward has a sixth shooter, he loads one bolt at a time, uh, similar to how the shotgun works. That's interesting, because that means that you don't need to, um, like you actually have a faster way to get a single shot in. Is this a game of the year so far? Well, it's, it's, uh, 
Uh, it's currently tied with recollection. Um, we'll see. Gonna have to simmer a bit before we know for sure. But uh, it has a very good chance of being a goody pick. Uh, like, what the hell is going on? Like we said, like this might be the best alone in the dark game, and like with how much we love. Alone in the dark. How could it not be, you know? Okay, let's see how Batiste and Edward uh, interact. If Batiste is here this time. Yes. Don't let him get inside, Carver. They're not the good. Oh, but he does not. He didn't. Um, Are you? Slam him down on the table. There are no owners here. We both strangers in Jeremy's story. Jeremy did this. How? Pack with the dog man. Jeremy warned us, but we didn't think much of it. I'm Detective Edward Carnby. I was hired by Jeremy's niece to find him. Oh yeah? How much you paying you? Hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> She's sure getting her money's worth tonight. You would think a man gone bad. No, not if I can help him. You know, I think Jeremy's hiding in a way we can't find him. He has this juju necklace that guides him. The talisman? That's right. It's some magic charm he got from Miss Jackson down the street. The voodoo priestess? You know surprising things, compare. Yeah, the mama lower. Here, take the key. I locked the gate to save her place from all the ghouls and goblins getting inside. Maybe if you go there, you can find some clues to show you the way. Thanks. I'll have a look. Oh, yeah, we didn't say it, but it's pr it was probably obvious. We will be uh, skipping um, listening and reading the things that we've already seen or read. Um, make this a little, a little smoother of a... Um, Run this time. You want to come along? Nah, I'm gonna stay here for a while. Similar to how we did Alan Week Two's the final draft. Anything I can do for? Sorry, I didn't catch your name. When does this play again? But uh, 1930. I think. Lottie, In the 30s, at least. We think it. We think it's 30. Exactly. All right, I'm heading out. Be careful out there. Yeah, I'm interested to find out if we actually got all the collectibles as Emily. That's a lot of money. You know what? Fuck that. These enemies go down faster than the plant ones, so...
can't go that way. We know, Combi, but we just realized something. There's a lot of um, bicycle bells we can ring here for no reason. Let's go back and ring them all. In case. <laughs> That's like a fucking trophy or something. Oh, fuck. Like here. Like here. Like here. Nope, oh, that one is not ringable. Hello. Like here, not ringable. Oh, there's something here. Oh. Um. How Emily had that much money lying around. Did she say what she like? Was she like? Was she? Is she? Is she even in? in is she even like a working lady? That's not. That's not the term we were trying to think of, but we couldn't think of, it, of the actual term. Is she even working? I wonder. Yeah, doesn't need to be anything to like you know. Yeah, but and like we're thinking like, okay, well maybe it's money from like her now dead husband, but like really he can't can't be making that much. He was like it, it, it didn't sound like he was particularly well off, you know. No, that's bad, but it's actually like not as bad as we thought. You know what? We're gonna do what we did for the final draft. We're setting it to easy. No reason to have it be. Hold on. Next highlighting. Put the part of clues and also highlight it. Oh, map highlighting. Doors and portals never highlighting it when they are able to be unlocked or solved. Oh. Oh, this must be like. Oh, this is what. This is the guidance stuff. Oh, interesting. You know what? Let's actually see what that looks like. I mean, we're not really in a puzzle setting right now, but when we are. I recognize this place. It's Miss Jackson's seance parlor. Let's see if she's got any information on Jeremy's talisman. It's the talisman, like the one in the painting.
Nothing else in here. I think it's meant for the talisman. Okay, do we have the... Three numbers need to span a bridge between the escape the memory, according to the stern, where I want to be, where it's the star 358. Interesting. Oh, hey, Gloria Allen is mentioned. Gloria Allen is the one that asks Carnby to, um, um, uh, check out the piano in the first game. Why he goes to the attic. The other Makes sense. A leak. Decorative plate. Yeah. Hmm. We know what to do. We just are curious about this door with the light. That was it. Three five nine. Is that it? Three five eight. I think it needs numbers, like coordinates. Maybe there's something in Jeremy's notes. Oh, oops. It's showing something. A place? Where is that? Huh. Detective, I was wondering when you were going to show up. Mrs. Thompson told me you were here. I understand you are working for Jeremy Hartwood's niece. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you're not wrong. We came here for her uncle. I just didn't expect... I didn't expect this. You are Dr. Gray, right? That's right. You don't happen to have some identification, Detective. I'm not keen on having strangers prying into my business. Oh. Detective Edward Carnby, Decatur Street, New Orleans. Enjoying the Vieux Carré, Detective? Those old French quarters, the voodoo people, the gangsters. I'm sure you live an exciting life. Well, that's not quite like the stories, Doc. Just trying to make a living. Aren't we all making a living? Well, welcome to Dossetto, Detective. I hope your time here will be useful. Now, what can I do for you? Why don't you tell me where I can find Jeremy Hartwood? <laughs> Why wouldn't that make for a short visit? I wish I could tell you, but I'm afraid I don't know. A drink, detective? Anything brandy. Oh, you do belong in the French quarters, detective. Armagnac or cognac? You know, just give me the cheap stuff. I'm not much of a connoisseur. Having low standards is not a virtue, detective. Let me see if I can broaden your perspective. What can you tell me about Jeremy? I wouldn't want to go into details about his condition. Doctor-patient confidentiality. I'm sure you understand. Sure. But he is crazy. And he's gone missing. Why? Here. Try this. Ooh, it's good. Got a bite. <laughs> it's called a sidecar. The trick is not to be afraid of the tartness of the lemon. Then, for goodness sake, don't overdo the triple sec. Okay, what can you tell me about Jeremy? Ah, oh, well, 
Let me think. He is an anxious man, constantly worried about events not presenting themselves according to his model of predestination. He complains about things not being carried out in the right order and that some things simply shouldn't be. Is any of this helpful to you? Uh, not really. Uh, I was hoping for some direction where to look next. I'm sorry. I have nothing for you then. You should talk to my orderlies. They have been looking for him for a while now. I'm sure they would appreciate your help. Yeah, I ran into Batiste earlier. Come to think of it, he... He might have given me a lead. Oh, excellent. So your investigation is already underway. I'm gonna go, but I'm sure we'll meet again. Looking forward to it. Safe returns. See if we meet Emily here now then. Detective yep. Carney. How did you... where did you go? I was just talking to Dr. Gray. You disappeared. No, it's not what you think. Have you... have you found anything strange going on here? Yes. Everyone is being incredibly evasive and I can't figure out why. No, I mean something you can't explain. Paranormal even. Detective? I really need you to get yourself together. I can't do this alone. Yeah, yeah. so the, the roles are reversed. That's a little disappointing. Dr. Gray? No. But I want, to, I want to try something else. Well, just tell us. It's fine. Follow Jeremy, the place he mentioned in the book. What was the name? Do you remember something Spanish? Tarawea. Yeah, that's where I need to go. Detective? Are you going to be all right? Yeah. Of course. Go talk to Dr. Gray. We'll rendezvous later. This talisman brought me back from the French Quarter in the blink of an eye. If Jeremy can travel so easily, then he could be hiding anywhere, even Tarawea. If he can do it, so can I. I just need to figure out how the talisman works. Saw you. Okay. I'm interested to see how fast we get through chapter two this time. Because chapter two was probably the one that we spent the longest Dr. on last time. There's no way I can get into this thing. Better leave it alone. It was like, um... There's no way I can get into this thing. Better leave it alone. Was, was this one that was 9... 941 or something? Oh, well, I don't remember. Looks like all the patients are accounted for. Except for Jeremy. Okay, let's see. Um... Time to do a room sweep. This is interesting. Yeah, so you get a green unlockable thing on the map like this. That's actually really useful. You know, we we think that's a good thing. That, that that's a good little um, modernization. We're happy we played through the game with the old school setting, memory run, but uh, this is definitely an appreciated update. Okay, here we go. She's not here. Interesting. Lost plan.
Now we're talking. It's wedged shut. She just plays Emily. That would be fun. Like, I was saying, like. Like, whether or not she's like. Like, I'm saying, like, being queer in 1930, you would get. You would get admitted for being a sexual deviant. That is true, you know? But we wonder. If she's gay, is she bi? Um, either way would be cool. We won't know until we see how she interacts with uh, Edward. Check for items. It seems the collectibles don't respawn, which is cool because it means that like we don't need to accidentally pick up the same one again. But we do wonder what that means for like replayability. Like, be like, if speedruns want to do a one hundred percent run, do they need to like have a fucking hard drive wipe? No, okay, that, that, that's not, that, that, that's obviously not true. But like, do they need to, like wipe the actual like save files from the hard drive? Um, that's a bit excessive. Yeah. There was an X button here, but it's not doing anything. Well, it's stained. This must be the clock that Jeremy wrote about. Huh? Looks like the plate that held the talisman in the seance room, but it's broken and missing some. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, detective. Didn't mean to obstruct justice or anything. That's fine. You know, I'm kind of busy with my own case of a missing person. I, I was wondering if you've seen Grace, a girl about yay high. I can't say that I have. Why are you asking? Well, I'm looking for her. Is she in trouble? No, 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 no. 
Uh, she's just uh, hiding somewhere. But we can't have a rascal like that running around unchecked at a time like this, you understand? Well, I haven't seen her. Well, let me know if you find her. I'll be around. Well, I'll keep an eye out for your man, Jeremy. You scratch my back, detective, and I'll scratch yours. Okay. McCarthy, remember. Open this. Uh, do, do, do. See, this is just the um. Looks like everything's back. How long which we can access? So like in the original Alone in the Dark One though, like he is an asshole. Like that's like his defining trait in the opening narration. <laughs> um we, we gotta keep in mind this is a different Edward. Like this is not the original timeline. Although it would be fucking bold of Pisces Interactive to be like, hey, let's do Alone in the Dark 2008. Let's do a reimagining of that unit. You know, we would we would respect the fuck out of that. Looks like alchemy. Or star constellation. I don't know if you can remember what this was. Like. Who is that? Ah, oh, or not. It's been funny though. You may need to remember how to get them out again. Ah, it's this one. Starting artist column. I remember hearing about their disappearance. These paintings got some grim looking rot on them. Mm. Yeah, now the now the um Objective Marcus just told us what the puzzle was. Honestly, we might turn that off when... Uh, actually, we're going to turn it off immediately. Uh... Right. Right, hints and what with... Yeah, that one. We don't want that one. Just in case, like, um, uh, okay, so William, Franklin, Nora, uh, just in case we encounter a new puzzle, we want to actually solve it. Uh, two, nine, four, two, nine, four. Pisces. Libra. Okay. Got it. Thank you.
box broke. Or maybe it just stopped at a very precise place. Uh, six, four, three. Hmm. Were these really the same as last time? Were they actually randomized? If so, that's that's pretty cool. There's a picture in the black glass. It's showing me something. It's the hallway. Outside. We never got into LA Noir, honestly. We wish we had, but like we could not get into it. Can't get in here yet, right? I need the key. We could have enjoyed it more if it wasn't this open world, you know, GTA like. Hold on, what did we not finish in Perosi's room? Too late now, but I have to look at that later. This doesn't seem to be the same, does it? I don't remember this. No, we do. Never mind. Huh. I made it. I entered another one of Jeremy's memories. Devil plan. Yeah, we've seen like we we have we have watched the entirety of Eleanor. Um We played through most of it ourselves as well. We just didn't enjoy it. Hold on, that's the flashlight. Getting stuck on the environment is definitely a problem in this game that, like, just need addressing. Like... Where you stuck? What do we do? Also, we can't tell you a, a April Fool's plans. That would ruin the point of April Fool's. We can't like re reload a checkpoint. Yeah, so that's unfortunate.
Okay. Game is kind of bork right now. What? So what's going on now? You're right. We're fucking losing frames. When did that start? Yeah, the frames are just leaking out. OBS, what's going on? Jesus fucking Christ. A computer is like dying. It's the CPU. Can you hear us all right? Just the video that's struggling. You hear us, okay. Um, this is not the first time this has happened, like, recently. Uh, we had this problem on Wednesday when playing Final Fantasy XI. Uh, um, like, all of a sudden, CPU usage just skyrocketed. I suppose it's fine now, maybe? Hold on, let's actually get some... ...some footage to, like, check with. Is it better now? God damn. Seems better. Odd. Very odd. <sighs> yeah, so by the way, we've given up the notion that we can just get like partial upgrades for a computer. We need a new computer at this point. This one is just so busted. We need an all new computer. This is not gonna cut it. We hate that. We hate getting a new computer. But... Yeah. Even. Hold on. We're gonna just free up some... Um, Some usage. So fucking frustrating. Like, no matter what we do, it, like, continues to just, like... <sighs> I was gonna say, just the game... ...that I mentioned when you played Alan Wake for the first time on this channel. Thought it was just as good as AW1, maybe even better, by Philistines. Uh... Well, uh, suggested, what was it? We don't remember. Um, God. Very high energy usage. That's also not great. Maybe Rick. 
No. No. First off, we don't have it. We can't get it. Not in the time needed. Um, just because we don't trust our PC to handle it at this point. Our PC is, like, deteriorating. And we're not sure what to do about that, because, like... Fucking Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail is coming out in... Three months. And... It has a fucking graphics update. We don't want to get the PS5 version of that just to play it, but we might have to. Um, but no, we're not gonna stream Heavy Rain tomorrow. Um, we wouldn't. We would not enjoy that. It would not be enjoyable. Uh, and we don't think it would even be funny because the game is so fucking slow that it would just be. We wouldn't get anywhere. Go find with a new PC. Well, <laughs> yeah. Computers cost money. They cost so much money. Uh, well, the Steam seems to work now. Let's keep playing at least. But like, but yeah, like it's. We don't know. It's a lot of money that we need to get. We have a summer job, but hey, like. That starts in the middle of May. We're gonna be doing it post surgery, which a lot of people we know are very skeptical about our ability to do our job um, post or a surgery like that. We think it's fine because most of the job is just sitting down at the register and working a store. But yeah. But that means that at the earliest, at the very earliest, we might have some money and. In June, you know. The rest is whatever we get through Patreon and Kofi and stuff like that. And it sounds mean to say because it makes it sound like we're complaining that we're getting money and that's not what we mean. But the money we get through Patreon and Kofi, etc. It's not new PC money, you know, like is surviving the month money. And sometimes getting things, getting games for stream money. But at this point, if streaming is going to be a problem even on console because a computer is falling apart, we might have to just somehow prioritize a new computer at any cost. And we might just have to find some other way of Finding income there. We have some things that like Got it. might be worth some money that maybe we can sell, but like never guaranteed. We'll see. You will see. For now, we'll continue as we as as we, as we currently are, and we'll just hope. We forgot about these enemies. Um. We just hope that, uh, oh, come on. Yeah, well, we're just gonna hope that it won't be as much of a problem. But we'll see. We probably need to like set a target computer. We can just be like, okay, this computer, how much is it? Start putting away money each month so we can get it. But that's difficult too, you know? Like, it's so fucking hard to just know what you need, and that then a computer needs to be available when you can afford it too. Like, buying computers is not easy. It's, you know, it just gets consistently more difficult the longer. Like the, the the more time passes, we used to be really like um, 
computer savvy when it came to like building computers. Cool. Um, but we're not anymore because the bottom's so fucking complicated. Like, technically, it's the same parts as before, but there's so many new models, there's so many new variables, there's so many new brands, there's so many everything. And it's it's never up to date, there's always new things. And the tech moves faster and faster and faster, and it just it's annoying. I'll say, doing the uh, no flask run of this game is gonna be interesting. That's a trophy. I'm not planning on streaming that because it's probably just going to be us groaning a bunch. But we are gonna try doing it. I mean, just a glance at the visible trophies a few days ago, it's the only one that seems difficult. Actually, we're curious now. How many trophies do we have? 47%. Bunch of hidden ones. Open all the safes and locks in the game. Find all the dining apps, yeah. They have their, there it is. Finish the game without drinking from your flask. Read all the clues. See, stuff like that is why we uh, actually made a save uh, at the end of the game with Emily. In case there's a clue we just haven't read, we can just bring up that save file and read it. Provided we got it, but we do. We think we got all the clues. confused about this part. We didn't find a lining up here with Emily and not as Edward either. Hmm. Why the Alone Dark One gramophone reference if it's not much of a reason to go here?
we've been up here. Can we get up there? Oh, wait, let check in that corner. Okay. Didn't check that corner. Uh, let's go back. There might be something there. Oh wait, can we not get there? Okay, no, that's the place I haven't been to yet. How bad? I wonder how moddable the PC version of this is. Oh come on, what? What did we hit? One thing we don't like about this game the slow, the really slow aiming when you pick up a throw of item. Just a tad too slow. The actual throw mechanic itself is really good. We like that it has like a, a uh, proper um, um, auto target if you like hover right above the enemy, but uh,
I wonder if Edward gets to actually fight that thing or if it remains exclusively something you encounter in cutscenes and in that um, self sequence. That stealth sequence shouldn't happen with Carnby, given that he was not married to uh, John. So we'll see what he gets instead. We're very curious about this. Mount Jeremy talked about in his book. Also, we love the fact that like uh, Edward apparently has read Jeremy's books, uh, meaning that this becomes even more Alan Wakey. out of my face who are you what are you doing here i'm just a detective trying to find something called tarawea you after jeremy too why i'm working for his niece she wants to make sure he's all right he might be unharmed but far from all right he's a curse upon deceto oh, here we go again quiet This is normally when it's possible to get the shotgun the first time, isn't it? Hot knife! Yay! Reflections on the power of the verb in certain texts. By yeah, that's the book that uh, Bond did. It's wedge shot. It worked. The bot. What's left? All oh, right. I have everything I need. Yeah, no, we know that this is where we got shut down from earlier, but like normally in the first playthrough, this is when you can normally get it. But since we already had that um, unlocked, it was already unlocked. Uh, let's see. Boiler room, cellar. Yeah, we can go to the cellar now. That's what we need to do. Uh, okay, cool. We're gonna run into Ruth. Not here. Can't do anything in the room until we get the key, so we're heading down. Oh. Not there. Let's go here. This is new, right? 
I don't remember a cutscene here. This where Edward meets Ruth, maybe? Grace? Oh, okay, no. I assure you. No, I'm sorry. I didn't, you, I, Mr. Hartwood is nowhere near my for, kitchen, and neither should you be. Don't look, make I, me I kick you out to, of this house. Sorry. Now get out. Yeah. <laughs> Conby was in shock, but also a little embarrassed. The house. Still don't like that. Uh, the listen to the. Uh, the uh, quest update is the same as opening the map, because, no, we want to open the map, thank you. Yeah, we think we heard a cat. We saw some people talking about the Waffle House thing, but we didn't really understand what it was about. Alright, triple phobia warning. Sorry, I forgot about it. Where's the body? Like the other one, it's broken and missing some pieces. You know, so it says nothing's in the kitchen. Can we even go in? No, doesn't say it's locked. The map is not great at updating, as we've established several times already, but still. Can be a little frustrating. People ask how to add waffles taken as a stage, and you're asking why people, why people want that. Okay. But, like, why did people want that? Was there, was there a reason? It does seem pretty random, but we don't know.
there's something missing. We're guessing Waffle House is a American, well, waffle restaurant chain. Oh, Grace is in here this time. She was in her own room, Bramley store, right? Out there, you drawing something? Nothing special. I'm just bored. Do I know you from somewhere? I remember you, Mr. Conby. From where? Don't touch that. Cassandra wouldn't like it. She wouldn't like it at all. Do you know where she is? I'd rather not talk about it. It makes me upset. Besides. She'll be back after the Feast of St. John. You think? Yep. It's all on the page, Mr. Conby. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right. I'm gonna go now, if that's okay. I don't like to stay too long in the same place. Mr. McCarthy might find me. Hey. Was he mean to you? Not everyone needs to be saved, Mr. Conby. You should know that by now. Hmm. Miss Beauregard. I pick oh yeah, uh, you might remember the last stream we said that we think we know where the ending is picked for Emily. If uh, the uh, if we're if we're right, it's when we see the dark man open the door, and we follow him in. At that point in the game, we had a key to go to the attic immediately, and we wonder if that's. Like whether or not you will. Like it's guiding me to do something. Um, what? Uh, follow the. Um, another one of those strange padlocks. Dark man and get a. Uh, and like uh, sever the pact, or if you will do something else, kind of thing. Might be wrong, but. It sounded just like it might make sense. This must be that kid's room. Why does she seem so familiar? Don't you worry, Grace. Go play your game, bleat and bellow with the others. I won't be jealous. There will be more masquerades. You already heard that one. <laughs> right, this is when... Um... Uh, the mask that looks like Edward from the first game, uh, that apparently looks like Emily's father. Found that was lining up. Um, huh. was. Was another line up? Thought it was. Okay, no, I guess we just a cutscene that Emily got them. What do we have left to find here? Oh. Did we not already have that? What a terrible thing to recognize that your betterment was... No, we've heard that one. Uh, okay, guess that one appeared for both 
Emily and Edward, or somehow we reloaded a save file with Emily and didn't have it. Okay. So the yoke would be that Waffle House would be open even if a Tekken fight was going on. Okay. Um, what items do we have? Right, the pallet knife can be used on the upper floor, right? Okay, not that way. What's left in Perosi's room? I did it. I crossed the threshold. Okay. It's a clue to the hateful mound. We were already supposed to have. <laughs> Oh, here's... Here's Ruth. Detective Conby. How good of you to come. Let me pour you a drink. What happened here? This place looks like it was hit by a bomb. <laughs> Welcome to the madhouse, Detective. Thanks. Did the ceiling just collapse? I heard it was something in the attic. Something that was supposed to happen, but didn't. How that could have such consequences is beyond me. The truth is, I don't know why the room looks like this. But I bet your friend Jeremy does. You know where I could find him? Oh, somewhere in his past, I suppose. He keeps going on about that mysterious dark man. I think he is hiding from him. Or maybe he's with him. I can't really keep up. I don't worry much. Take a look around this room. You may think it looks spectacularly devastated, but I just think it's finally found its stride. It fits perfectly with the state of this place and its loonies. The same goes for the nonsense with Jeremy. In my eyes, we finally managed to match the wild ride inside all of us. Well, I'm happy you find the evening so harmonious. I uh, hope you don't mind me setting things right. Jeremy's business, that is. This room looks beyond my capabilities. Good luck, detective. Hope to see you again soon. Yeah, evening, miss. Well, she was certainly less touchy feely with Carmby. Let's see what she says in her extra dialogue. Can I get some more of that whiskey? Go ahead, detective. I don't think I can stomach any more anyway. Am I bothering you? 
On the contrary, detective. I enjoy watching professionals at work. Well, I better get going. Bye now, detective. Don't take any wooden nickels. No, don't worry. It's not uh, Lunar Dark 3. We don't need to pick up any wooden nickels. Was that Lunar Dark 2? God, I don't remember now. Seems are blurring together. Does that mean we need to replay them again? Yeah, she does seem a lot less interested. We'll see though. Like, there was um, three major scenes, right? That Emily had with Ruth. Three cutscenes. Um, we'll see. But the fact that she was even like, like she was so severely um, scaled back here from um, how she was with Emily, that definitely places her in the yeah. It's meant to be read as that as like as her being queer, that she's so flirtatious with Emily. Because, like, they wouldn't do that otherwise. They wouldn't have her, like, broking her hand and stuff. Like, we well, yeah, would like that. She may be a cultist, but, like, what was she? I'm not even sure. She, just seemed, she seemed to just kind of be along for the ride or whatever. I need the key. Right, this is where we made Grace as um, Emily and get stabbed. Okay. We went to the dining room. Maybe? Yes. No. There's more of that aggressive rot. On the commonplace of. Oh, the grand parlor has something. Good. Let's get that again then. Your map is of no use here. In the middle of updating. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can get the largest room from here. That's good. Let's go see what we missed in here. Oh, now it's blue. Did you just imagine it was pink? Huh. Oh well. Not a big deal. Cool. Drawing room is the lens. We need the lens there. That means we need to go to Cassandra's room. When do we get the key to Jeremy's trunk? Ruth. Who does Barbie not get that? Maybe? constantly just checking the library because we know the library door gets locked at some point.
Oh, this is the wrong room. Wait. Yeah, okay. Gonna double check. Yeah, that is. Oh, hello. Emily's here. made the shape of a snake there must be something important to find here maybe it has something to do with the numbers two five six you already forgot them almost which one two five what okay oh it was two five nine that's six okay Pretty bad at recognizing numbers and when we stream. Um this e. And them are like glowing, so we should have checked all of them. Most of the clues are mandatory to check if you pick them up, so. Double check in here. Not sure if it counts its own room or not. Probably not. Okay. Now to remember how this. Nothing correct. There? Yeah. 
Так. Вот. О. О, фу. Nine seven five. Jack, you're here. Oh, hello. Oh, oh, no. Thought there was a UI symbol with the glare from the bottle. Nine five seven. Was it not nine? How do we never get this right? Nine five. Oh no, it's nine seven five. <sighs> Black glass is showing me another room. Must be a way to another one of Jeremy's memories. Okay. Graveyard level. I knew it. I knew it would work. I'm getting good at this, Carnby. I know I'm too good at this. This is not how much this level genuinely reminds us of Lone Rock Six, like. That feels like the kind of thing they just straight up wouldn't want to reference. No one likes the Lone Dark Six. And when we say that, it means something. Emily's family must have deeper roots in New Orleans than I thought. I figured she was a Yankee like me. Um, still, we dig it. If, if that's what it is, we do dig that. We are deeply of the opinion that you should not. You know, exclude something from a series just because it wasn't popular. There's something missing. What's this? You call my name. Okay. Um. Long way around. We should stream Alone in Rock 6 at some point. We should, stream, we should stream all of them. But. Alone in Rock 6 is just so fascinating. Because we think it's the only one you can't even buy anymore. Not counting, like, console specific versions. But, like. Like. Like, uh, the, um. PS1 and Sega Saturn version of Alone in Rock 2, or. The Wii and PS2 version of Lone Duck 5. Uh, Lone Duck 6 is straight up the only one we think is not available at all. We could be wrong. We don't think you can buy it on Steam. It was only ever released on Steam. We own it, of course. So we can, we can play it, it's fine. But...
It would be kind of fun if it's still possible to buy it. It would be kind of fun to like buy a bunch of friends that only knock six and force them to play us. With us. I, we mean, convince them to play with us. It's a four-player co-op game. You can't play single player. Not fun. And again, it probably won't be super fun in multiplayer either, but it would be less of a fucking hassle. Shit! Once again, the fucking plant people. Always the plant people. Oh, okay. Interesting. I guess then that's their way of doing the Resident Evil 2 thing, where you have to play both um, characters to get the, the last part of the game. That's pretty cool. Hopefully we get it then. So once again, that really just makes the question how they how how they thought speedrunners should handle this game, because like, come on, you gotta have it's gotta be a way to reset that stuff then. Maybe there is something we just haven't seen it yet. Forgetting to turn the flashlight back on. Down with dignity, all the worst of stage, and a goat without horns. So, we the ones we don't have, probably because you need to play both stories to get it. But our point was more that, like, um, like ideally, you should be able to, like, do do speed runs both with any percent and one hundred percent of a game. Not too much hassle. So, oh. like, setting it up. I mean, obviously, the speed run itself can be a hassle, but like, we hope there's a way to just reset the lagging apps. So that if people want to do an any percent speed run, they're not locked into already having at all. Anyway, that's enough about the uh, ending stuff. We want to discover these things ourselves, generally. Once again, the throw the item just didn't work. Ah, 
yes, Moto, but like, you shouldn't have to do that. It's the same thing that's been going on with Dragon's Dogma right now. Like, you should be able to reset a game from within the game. That's a pretty basic fucking feature. Um... Should not require you like ideally you should never it's blocked. have to go into your fucking storage browser for the sake of a feature in a game. But we never we always get stuck here. We got stuck here last time as well, not figuring out which way to go. Down here. I've already been here, where we went down the first time. A Dragon's Dogma 2 is patching in the ability to select new game from the menu. Like, that's absurd. Similarly, a new game should have the option like, hey, do you want to play an actual new game? Or do you want to play a new game plus? Those should not be the same thing. If something carries over, you should have the option of resetting it without having to turn off the game, going into some, some a file browser and deleting the thing. At least that's our opinion. If there's artistic reasons for it, we can maybe get behind it. Like, like for example, Undertale has a very good reason why you're not allowed to just play around with the file data as you want, because, you know, the game plays you as well. But, like, that's not the point. Like, in, like for example, in Dragon's Dogma's case, it's literally, like, just a overly paranoid attempt at not giving the player control of their save file and they could clearly realize that was ridiculous if they're they've already patched it and we think we think they patched it today actually um like people aren't like it's not it's not gonna be cheating to reset your save file like no no one is gonna be like oh man i fucked up a tiny thing but I can just reset my entire game. Like, yeah, let them then. It's not like your save scum, which is what their save system was meant to prevent. Uh, even though we think it's ridiculous to. Oh, we have to run. Oops, sorry. We forgot what this section was. <laughs> like, like the Dragon's Dog thing is meant to be like an anti save scum thing. Um, but. Like, it doesn't work like that. Like, Dragon's Dogma 1 had a new game option at launch and it was fine. And now Dragon's Dogma 2 has another one. And this one should, this one, if it provides different endings, it provides different content. Obviously, you should be able to just set a new game that's a new game, not a new game plus. This is the reason that, like, like Resident Evil offers that, you know? Like, you're not locked into always playing the B scenario if you beat the A scenario once. It goes for both the original and the remake. Oh, yeah, we have a shotgun, I keep forgetting that. You know, speaking of Dragon's Dogma 2 selling you things, apparently, like, uh, Capcom was like, would you be interested in the Dragon's Dogma 2 DLC? Like, new DLC. And it's like, oh, so now you want to actually sell new content, not just selling back content that's already in the game. Amazing. You can do that. You, make, you can make something new and sell it. 
And of course, they were already, they're already planning it. Like, we're so tired of, like, pretty. The game is so pretty. We're really tired of AAA developers doing this thing where, like, they pretend they haven't actually planned on, um, um, uh, making DLC yet. They're like, oh, maybe if it's popular, we'll make DLC. It's like, no, you've already decided. Because development takes way too long for you to wait on that. And you just let the developers sit and twiddle their thumbs between release and now. Like, no. I've been in development for half a year. Like, huh. we know how these things go. Uh, Okay, what was it now? That. No, that one is there. And then that one is there. That feels wrong. Let's see if it's right. It's right. They pulled that shit with Final Fantasy 16. They were like, oh, we, we might make DLC. Then they made DLC. And then later they were like, oh yeah, we were always going to do DLC. We, we started it early. Like, yeah, of course you did. Please don't cut your... Jeremy, what are you doing here? Everyone's looking for you. I know, it's all a big mess. No one understands. I I'm just trying to keep even with Bay. Just for a little while longer. You gotta come back with me. Your niece is waiting at Dorsetto. Emily? Why would you? My letter. I keep making it worse. What is going on, Jeremy? How is any of this happening? I mean, I mean that's not true, Moto. That's not true. The dark man. Who is he? You're the wrong we, have, we have it on good authority from people. That the, the the PV stuff was well into development when Activision axed it. I need to they were absolutely developing on. it. But also, they didn't sell that because the game didn't cost any money. A free-to-play game. So like, sorry, no. about to awaken and to set a won't harm anyone outside of that cursed place. You're acting crazy, Jeremy. I want to help. There's nothing you can do. Then what's all the business about Terawea? Why did you want to go there? Oh, I can't go there. I'm not allowed. But you wanted to. Can I go? Tell me, will it help me to break your pact? Is there something there that would help? Why would you give me hope? That's so cruel. Okay. Sounds like we're onto something here. What should I- Look out! Behind you! Run! Don't let him take you! If you want an example of a developer advertising features, selling people features that don't exist, um, no, no, well, <sighs> okay. They weren't selling anything they didn't deliver on because they weren't selling it. Or with that. And they actually sold the game like they did Overwatch 1 with the promise of a feature. Fine. But the whole point of starting the weapon in Overwatch 2 was that it was going to have the um, campaign feature, the PvE feature. Uh, that was the reason they split it off to, to a separate game. And we can't 
talk about some details, but like we know from people who worked on the game that like that was the focus and that changed um it was a very sudden change and then they like, still kept working on pve albeit in a smaller scale and then now that's got an axe as well oh well, now it's a bit too regardless they never sold that feature they didn't they just didn't someone selling a feature doesn't exist examples of that do exist the launch version of no man's sky they truly lied about what could be done in the game but people will try and argue otherwise because sean murray was so unspecific about things when he he still lied about plenty of things uh the 3do version of doom promised new levels weapons and everything and they not never was never in development and was never there um There was a Call of Duty game a few years ago that had a multiplayer mode now that I asked for release. Uh, but even that was announced that it was axed before the actual game released. But they, of course, they were taking pre-orders for that. So uh, stuff like that happens. Stuff like that happens all the time. But. Yeah, um, in Battle Pass examples of this as well, like, uh, in a lot of, like, online service titles, uh, I fucked this up. By the way, it was not a single player mode, it was a PvE mode. Like, it was still going to be played as a multiplayer game. Um, but yeah. I've seen so many strange occurrences lately. Memories explode into existence and then burn out like Thai glass ball filaments. Dreamscapes crash down from the stars and sink into the sea. Doors that lead to nowhere and absolutely everywhere. I've already seen that one. Oh, that's the luggage key. She's dead. No matter how she died, she. Oh, another good example. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 was taking pre orders not just for the base edition, but the collector's edition of a game that literally doesn't exist anymore. But Bloodlines 2 is still coming out as a completely different game. But they sure as hell sold those pre-orders. But all this just comes down to like why pre-orders as a concept should not be done with games until they're ready to until they're basically they're being ready to release. In fact, ideally we don't think a pre-order system with a with payment should exist at all with the game. We lost that battle a long time ago. Fortunately. Jeremy this sucks just how many things of video games are like oh this is a terrible thing we shouldn't be doing this but we've been doing it so long now that everyone's just accepted it and it will never change. that is just video games in a nutshell Not that it couldn't change, of course. Anything could change. It would require people to, like, actually 
not engage with bad, the bad practices. And people prefer instant gratification rather than long-term improvement of something. Hell, we're not gonna act holier than thou here. We do it too. Hell, we bought this game, didn't we? What is what is stopping us here? It's like an invisible boulder here. Like we bought this game. This game. This game has day one DLC that should have been included in the base game. Uh, and it's by um, it's by TSU Nordic, which is a subsidiary company of Embracer, we believe. A company that we really should not be supporting at all. And we almost didn't. We weren't going to, and we caved. I'm glad to say that it seems at least that Embracer hasn't screwed over Pisces Interactive yet. We're hoping they don't, but we'll see. Seem to just be moving. They seem to be moving towards trying to sell sell their various studios now, because and before keeping them, something they should have thought of before they bought everything. But you know. Is there an item in here? I think we checked that last time. Doesn't seem like it. And for one. Whoa, what's going on? It's dialing in something all on its own and it's showing the way to another memory? Where is that? Another world. And okay, nice. Lots of blue rooms. Is Pisces directly owned by Embracer? Wouldn't surprise us. It's a Swedish company, so. Pretty much the only Swedish companies that aren't owned by Embracer are like owned by EA now, so. It probably won't last. Can't afford it. Which. Hopefully will not result in layoffs. See. This is a sitting room in the clerk's office.
I can't remember right now. But yeah, paradox too. That yeah, pa that's that's right. I need the key. There's no way I can get into this thing. Better leave it alone. Where are we going? I should not remember. It's stained. Looks like some kind of rot. It's not this not yet. There's something missing. I forget what was in the memory image. Lost track of our memory. Dining room. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're we're generally pretty okay with like selling DLC being developed stuff like that, because like there's always a variety of costs that's like can't be compared from game to game. No, no Man's Sky also had a massive base, like like, like the starting revenue for that game was ridiculous. In a way that Paradox is far more niche games don't really match up with. But yes, there's definitely a... a, a um, you can be successful making free updates for your game. Minecraft is another example. Here we go. Like... Whenever someone talks about like uh, live service games, how they require constant selling of DLC, we just point out, well, Minecraft doesn't. Hold on. We open the gate here. Are you just going through the door. Oh yeah, it is. Chapter really is the longest chapter, huh? I'm glad to see you made it. I had my doubts, but the hope you instilled has yet abandoned me. I guess this must be Tarawea. Who are you? My name is Juan Luis Jorge, and this is indeed the convent of Tarawea. You'll have to excuse me, but Yermi never got your name. The name's Edward Carnby. I'm a private investigator. 
You're not a patient, are you? No. I'm the author of a book that Yermi once found important. How does that work? Are you part of this memory as well? Is this even a memory? I think calling me a manifestation of Yermi's subconscious would be more correct. And so is the convent of Tarawea. I'm a man Yermi has never met. And we are in a place that he has never been. Okay. So are you here to guide me or something? I have no more purpose than you do. I simply am. I will happily help you, of course, if I'm able. If you are already somehow part of Jeremy, why did he want to come here? Isn't he sort of here already? Jeremy wanted to come here because it's a representation of his mind at peace. When Dr. Gray asks him to find his focus during his sessions, this far-flung convent is what Jeremy imagines. He is under the impression that if he could physically come here, he would reach a perfect equanimity. A spiritual apotheosis. You don't think it would work? Jeremy subconsciously knows it's just wishful thinking. He can't come here. Despite the pathways opened by the dark man between their Seto and Jeremy's psyche, it's simply not possible. But I'm here. <laughs> Indeed. It's a shame it's just another place for you, detective. Otherwise, you could have become a Buddha. Always a bridesmaid, never a blushing bride. Am I right? <laughs> yes, I suppose so. You'll have to chase enlightenment elsewhere. So what's the next best thing? What can I do here? Mm, you should seek out the convent library and try to find the truth about Yermi's relationship with the Dark Man. It's the sort of knowledge he represses and is unable to reflect on. Will it tell me how to break the pact? Perhaps. At least you'll have something to confront Yermi with. Wait, why can't you just tell me? I don't know such things. You'd be better off consulting the text of Dr. Freud, if you want such answers. <laughs> no thanks, I hate shrinks. There is another thing you should know about the library. He is here as well. The Dark Man has been working his way through the text for a long, long time. He's here? How am I supposed to get past him? Be careful, detective. Oh, jeez. Just perfect. Really? Crusader Kings 3 had sold No Man's Sky? The PlayStation sales of No Man's Sky? We thought for sure that was higher. No Man's Sky sold 1,172,846 units first week at retail on PlayStation 4. The uh, approximately 800 is Steam purely. And it was PlayStation that marketed No Man's Sky. Yeah. That was like the big thing. Sony's big press conference at E3 and everything. Do you have any advice on how to deal with the Dark Man? Hmm. I suppose suppression could work. 
try not to pay him any attention. I know you said Jeremy's never been here, but does this place exist in real life? I think it's supposed to be Mexico. But I am not certain of that away as origin. Well, good to meet you, Juan. I'm going in. May the gods be with you, Edward de Gilvan. Okay. I'm not really wish we had a map or dreamscapes. What's the, what was the official term for these places actually? We've been calling them dreamscapes because it makes sense to us, but like. After this is where where things has to be like different, right? After this, like Emily's personal widow story takes over. Obviously, all the cutscenes have been very different, but like. The worlds need to be different after this. It'll be interesting. What if Edward gets any more Dark Man chases too? We thought there would be more of those when we got the first one. A lock away. Misread that as look away, and I was like, wait, did we miss a clue last time? the um dark man stealth sequence it's also where a collectible was found but we already have it so yeah We never went this way last time.
pass them here. Now he goes up here. This is one way to do it. Be faster than he is. Ah, you motherfucker! Um, just don't think about him. Pay him no attention. Oh, that work. The thing about this part is that it's like deceptive with like this difficulty it's not as hard as you think it is but you get scared <laughs> that's what we get for gloating huh <laughs> Yeah, you lose health if you're close to him. Um, actually. You don't even you don't even lose health. It actually drains separately from your like active health, which is kind of the game. But maybe if you noticed, uh, it actually drains from like the top health rather than from where we are health wise. And then it re regained. Pretty cool. What happens if you try and shoot him? Good question. We should have tried. We did not think of it. Maybe if there's one more section, we don't remember if there is. It might be. No, no, I think it's over. We're gonna guess it doesn't work, but who knows, maybe. Mm, yeah, didn't find anything new in Tarawaya this time. Here's something. So we're guessing all of the unique items you need are in the exclusive Edward and Emily section. That Who makes sense? That's how grounds. we would do it too if we used a system kind of like that. Itinerant showman who held forth in public halls and aroused widespread fear. The New Orleans address of the event is lost, but I remember distinctly... Well, sorry, right, the Price Shipping, shipping company, company, that will always obviously be the last shared section.
I fear there is no way. I was so close. There must be something I can work with. Come on, Garmy, think. Think. The ship had come. Prexed. Right. Good luck, Detective. We wonder if we will learn. Like, when we played as Emily, the only reference to Pregst from the original game was the name of that shipping company. Oh, hey, Ruth. Well, thank God you're here, Detective. Sitting all alone in a place like this, I'd never live it down if the papers got wind of it. Hey. Ruth, right? Oh. Don't pretend you don't know. I'm sure you have a whole file on me by now, Detective. I suppose we weren't formally introduced. I'm Ruth Talon. Miss Ruth Talon, in case you're wondering. Edward Carnby. Enchanté. Are you sure? I had too many already. It's good. I know. I have great taste, Detective. I heard you're trying to break Jeremy's promise to the Dark Man. Yeah. Do you know anything about that kind of stuff? No. But it makes you wonder. If he made a promise, can't he simply stand by his words? Look, I'm just trying to get Jeremy out of a bad deal, so he'll come back with us to New Orleans. Well, if all fails... What are you doing? <laughs> it's a sign of submission to the Dark Man. I saw it in a dream once. What? You don't know the Prext Shipping Company by any chance? I do. They made big money during the war. Their waterfront office is just over there. How did you do that? Do what, detective? <laughs> Bonne chance. Hey, have you seen Emily Hartwood anywhere? Are you trying to make me jealous, detective? <laughs> no, I haven't seen your doll anywhere. Okay. That was also old. According to the book in Tarawea, the Dark Man is connected to a performance that Jeremy went to somewhere in New Orleans. I'm sure I can find the address inside. It's locked from the other side. Well, I never got to line me up with, um, uh, tutorial there. The sewer system has a tunnel running right below Preg's shipping company. I bet I can use it to get inside.
Oh wait, no, right, you unlock it from inside. You remember the last beam flag using Velma and Daphne from Scooby Doo? Okay, I will. Daphne's canonically by, but yeah, that's. I mean, it works. It works, work. Steve Doris Key, where does that go? Remember that. When we're looking at Sky and Gundam. Yeah. Guys, it's the Sky and a lot of things actually. I'll call the sunset lesbian flag for nothing. Uh, a lot of shots. Oh, that's what you need a key for. But right. if I get that crane going, that should do it. What? We just run in a circle? We get to the crane. Hold on, and we have the aura as combi? No, we have not. We have. No, we lost our sledgehammer! What? No! That sucks. Ah. Oh, there. This time this level is gonna take way less considering we know the puzzle this time. You throw them differently? Not sure. It might just be that we're faster with throwing them. We haven't noticed anything, but would be surprised if that's the case.
don't think he does. Hold on, let's try. Oh no, you're right. Like the uh, the reticle, uh, it's not even, it's not even a reticle, but like. Are you serious? Things are dropping again? What? Why? Are you sure? We haven't lost any frames in OBS this time. Gonna take up the thing on our own computer on our phone so we can watch. You're right. They are dropping. Is it permanent? Rotate the camera a bit. We're, we're watching the stream back on our phone. It seems fine now, but we're gonna keep the stream going, like, in our peripheral vision, just to be safe, in case it happens again. Ah, oh, need a new computer, hate needing a new computer. Oh yeah, I should probably mention this. We're not sure we're gonna finish. Dragon's Dogma 2 stream. Um, we'll see how we feel after the next stream, but we're not enjoying it as much as we would hope, uh, as much as we, 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 we would like to. Um, so we're gonna have to like, reconsider that potentially because we don't want to, you know, we. we we don't want to devote ourselves to like an 80 hour RPG that we're not enjoying streaming, you know. Um, we're gonna see. It did get better when we switched to uh, Thief, the vocation, but yeah, we'll see. We've been thinking about it and at that point we would rather just switch to... Um, something else to play. Yeah, that sounds like it's on your end, Molo, because it runs fine on ours. Hey, I always wanted to try one of these. You know why it's called a Tommy Gun? Because it was invented by uh, Tommy Tallarico. Four, five, four. Ojin Pan. Oh, yes, we're on uh, Carmi now. Gotta go manifest. Here we go. The address where Jeremy first encountered the Dark Man. And yep, down. Jump down, jump down. There we go.
During the cash work? That's good, Mata. Yeah, my warehouse sure was shorter when you don't get stuck in a puzzle for 25 minutes. Oh, it's not just this motherfucker. There's another dude that also wears a hat indoors in this game. At least Edward has the excuse that he's constantly going outside again, but... Yeah. We really want to mod all the other versions of Carnby into this game. And Emily for that matter. Um, actually, Emily doesn't have that many other versions, but... Um, he does have a... Um, descendant in the Lone Rock 6. That'd be fun. If the PC version is moddable. And honestly, good riddance, Yunpan. Like, come on. Get a hat. Especially when it's sunny outside. Like, nice. You want to tell me what this is all about? Welcome, detective. To the greatest show this side of the Mississippi. Now the hotel. The Black Pharaoh. The ancient magician who lived a thousand lives and wore a thousand masks. I can see why you settled on calling him the Dark Man. Saved your breath. So, you got scared by a stage magician, and now he's living inside your head. You can mock me, Detective. But you would be the crazy one to think his presence can be ignored. Look where we are! We didn't get to finish our last conversation, did we? You were about to tell me how to break the contract with the Dark Man. No, we can't. We were turned on loose on the wharf. So many innocent would die. But there is a way to break out of the deal. There is. You offered me a way out. Steps to take. What are they? You'll never find them. They're forever entombed in his sunken desert temple. Jeremy, I'm not your enemy. Tell me where to go. How do I find the temple? No, we can't. I have to make this sacrifice. God damn it, Jeremy. I'm gonna save you. Don't worry. Okay. How do you save someone who doesn't want to be saved? Well, he's gonna get saved no matter what. I just need to find the temple somehow. Anything in here? Line me up? I don't think so. Right, it's hold on. Two five eight. Two five eight. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it does feel a little science hill. We agree. Oh, eight. Got him.
on it. Oh, right. That. Duncan Temple. Basically, the story is about Nyalatotep versus um, uh, Ship Nigurat in the end. It's pretty funny because, of course, in uh, Alone in the Dark 1, uh, Ezekiel pregs the Dark Man um, uh, was the tree. <laughs> uh, get back to Lovecraft Roots and see. Well, yeah, it's not the first time. They've done that before, uh, but. Sunken desert. Like, come back to it before. I better get there. Yeah. Um. Helgit Lana is getting a sequel. Yeah. Uh, well, Helgit London had a sequel. Uh, I have had a few sequels, but but yeah, Helgit Helgit is coming back, uh, and uh, we hope it's good, of course. But we definitely like got worried when, like, as part of their announcement, they proudly. Took, um... The temple of Nephron lies under our camp, despite all efforts that are. Uh, they like they they claimly they, they claimly they proudly claimed how they invented the battle pass. Like the developer slash publisher, uh, had this bit, or like they were like, oh, the original Hellgate London, uh was ahead of its time by inventing the uh, monetization system now known as a, a colloquially as a battle pass and it's like you should not be proud of that uh but yeah hugged lana was kind of fun um rough but fun Wonder what the new one will be. There actually was a new one. The Taurus. Yes, a few years ago. It was a VR exclusive one. But how do I get to it? Yeah, Hugget VR came out in like 20... 19? 2020? Something like that? There it is. <laughs> Once again, we forgot to bring out the flashlight. He attacked me while we're um doing this. It worked. They can attack us now. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you.
Okay, let's see. Do oh yeah, right. We pick up the um um the ads. The ads. It was ads. Ads. Stop right now. Ads. That goes down. Cool. Oh, yeah, and then up here. Remember now. We had a lunar dark uh, 2008 music. That's gotta be. Oh, blah, 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 blah. oh hello. <laughs> gotta be honest, that's one thing we're kind of disappointed about with this game. Uh, there's some good atmospheric. Sounds in this game, but we were, we kind of miss just having like fucking bopping song, song like music, to, like remember. Because the original Lone Dark has an excellent soundtrack. The entire trilogy is good, but the first one is especially good. And Lone Dark 2008 is like one of the best soundtracks. It's so ridiculously good. The rest are not that great. But... Uh, well, so much for a pistol on the run. Where's the PS switch here somewhere? Maybe the switch is in the other room. Like, do, we think this game works really well as a standalone thing. We don't think they need to do a sequel, like a direct sequel kind of thing. But, but if they do make a direct sequel to this game and like they have the balls to actually like make their own version of 2008, like Lone Dark 2008, not in a oh look we can do it better than the others, like we can do it good unlike the other, but like more a is our reinterpretation of like that concept the way they've done the Lone Dark trilogy here? God, that would be so cool.
we just respect the hell out of that. We need more like We need we need more remakes that like take something flawed and not super popular and successful and be like, okay, let's try and give this another spin rather than just taking the big popular existing thing and doing it again but probably worse. You know? Maybe we should remake capitalism. <laughs> okay. Hey, okay, okay. Capitalism is not the slightly flawed diamond in the rough, okay? We we we, we can retcon capitalism. Capitalism can become lost media, it's okay. Well, where are we going? Wait, did we miss? Oh, wait. Ah, oh. ah, uh, fuck. We forgot a step. Uh, hold on, what's the way there? Is through here? Yes. Alone Dark always had Tomb Raider bits. Or rather, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider had Alone in the Dark Sea bits. But this one doesn't have platforming. They got rid of the platforming. Alone in the Dark did 3D platforming before Tomb Raider did. Oh, more level streams? Well, more level streams will happen. Um, the thing is... <laughs> okay, so like, you know we're playing through the 11 story with friends on Wednesdays? Uh, well, this week that didn't really work out. Uh, like, people weren't available. So we ended up not making any progress there and just sort of like wandered about. Doing other shit, but um, but yeah, no, there will be 11 streams. But we want to play something else as well. Like we want to play something we can actually like progress in properly. I don't know, maybe, maybe we will do more Dragon of Dogma 2. We're not saying absolutely we won't, we're just saying that after next stream, we're gonna evaluate whether or not we're enjoying it enough. There's some games that we don't enjoy, we can still make enjoyable streams out of, but that's not always the easiest thing. We know it's here, we just want to see if there was any item there. Alright, that should be it for um, the shared content, right? Now, this, now it has to be original stuff happening to Edward. Original. A unique stuff. Acknowledge psychological trauma, break through barriers of self-deceit, temper manic behavior. He's in the dark man's terms. The contract. What trauma does Edward Carnby have? In this continuity. Don't think he's the vessel of um, Lucifer on this one. So. Oh.
Oh wait, was the steamboat before hey. Hey. the war stuff? I'm not sure anymore. The steamboat might be in this one, Paul. What are you doing? Oh, I found some. Great. Was it alcohol? God no, I just got the wind knocked out of me. I think I know how to break the contract with the dark man. What exactly does that mean? Everything going back to normal. Uh, all right. Uh, I found some more information on Dorsetto and the patients. There are some seriously strange things going on here. I'm pretty sure two of the patients are dead and maybe even the clerk. Oh, yeah. I kind of just gave up on worrying about that. Well, just keep your eyes open, I suppose. What were you doing again? Jeremy made a pact with the Dark Man to keep all the madness locked inside Dorsetto. All right. I'm gonna break it. I just have to... Where is it? Where's the telephone? <laughs> it's around your neck? Ah. Ah. I worry, detective. Don't. I'm fine. I worry that you're not much help on this case. But at least you're a good distraction. Trust me. You're getting your money's worth. At this rate, I'm an absolute bargain. <laughs> we can't explore the attic. Do you think that a game that um, we just beat Emily's story on, like, less than four hours ago, you would, like, have a better memory of in terms of, like, all the events going on? But we are so bad at actually remembering this shit. Um, okay. Repertory, okay. Okay, so that door is bolted on this side or the other side? I guess we'll find out. Uh, where are we headed? Calm Great and office. Have a okay. This side. This side okay. This time when we get the attic key, we're gonna go to the attic immediately. We're gonna try at least. We'll see if we're allowed. Um, I need the key. Rather than follow the dark man. <sighs> Got to be around here somewhere. He wouldn't leave this house. I don't know what to think anymore. You run into that dick fella. Who is he? Can he be trusted? I think he wanted the good guy. Well, you know, like us. Will he be all right with her coming? Praise the mother. He don't even know about all that. Just calm down. It ain't time yet. God, it hurts. As far as I can tell, Detective Combe seems to be solving problems, not causing them. Just be ready in case he starts anything. The two order. Uh, body library, conservatory, and then the yeah, yeah. Hold on. was that we must wasn't there a night there it is 
lunacy. Okay, then when you're joining, when we're skipping all the notes, we already read them on Emily's playthrough. This is our second playthrough. Edward. Um, so, check out earlier streams. Or the start of the stream. Or that stuff if you want to read it or listen to the voiceovers. And they're good. Good stuff. This game is good. Um, just. That is why. Mrs. Give me some. Cool, everything blue, everything blue. Except for the attic and places we're going to in a bit. Good, good. That means we haven't missed anything. Double check. Oh, the boiler room has not gone red again. Last time, it was either the boiler or the laundry room that went red and we Thought we missed something. Probably didn't. Probably just a bug, but still, it was worrying. Right, and now the stairs up here, and no, the ladder up here broke. Still not pink. Okay, good. Spare key to Dr. Gray's office in here somewhere. I don't have the combination for this. But maybe Jeremy did. This is not the All right, time to get Jeremy out of that contract so we can get the hell out of here. Something tells me I'm going to have to put my talisman to use. Hmm. I need the key. Well, is Jerry's room red? Yes, it is. Okay. Red, pink. It's pink. Probably meant to be red, but it's pink. Combi, I'm terribly sorry that my niece has pulled you into this mess. We already heard this one as well. That it for the oh, Batiste's room. We haven't been there, have we? No, we were. We went. We were there briefly, but there was nothing there. Right now, brother, I need you to trust me. This is the most important. Also moment. old. God damn it! You think Grace or Cassandra's room? There is a clue to the fucking safe here somewhere. We know we opened it last time. This is the wrong way. Oh, new. Okay, cool. Detective Conby. Good to see you again. 
solved your case yet? I'm trying. Hey, Grace, you okay? Oh, she is just peachy, detective. Are you looking forward to the Feast of St. John, Grace? I can't wait. Kids, ain't they great? What exactly are you planning for tonight? Oh, not much. We eat, we drink, we pay tribute to the wishing tree in the conservatory. The usual. Then why all the excitement? There is just something about tonight. Something is different. I think we all feel it. Besides, we got ourselves some new words for the prayer thanks to your buddy Jeremy. She'll come and turn the world inside out, and things will begin again. That sounds strangely threatening. You should come. Oh, God damn it, Grace, stay put for once. I started to think that, like, Grace scenes from the original trailer for this game are not in the final game. We're gonna look at the um I better hold on to these. Um wouldn't want them to get lost. We're gonna look at the reveal trailer when we finish the game. Uh, again. Uh and uh compare, but like we distinctly remember a gray sea and that hasn't happened and we can't imagine what happened now either. This is different. This is a new puzzle. Uh here we are, new face. Jack in the box, full. You said full on the Jack in the box. We've now picked up the Jack in the box three times. Um. Yeah, cool. We got some new. We got a new puzzle. Things are different now. Nice. Cool. We've reached a point where the game bridge is, is, is splits off, probably. Jeremy knew that the only one who could help him now was the guest in room number and 13. Now one three. It worked. The last guest. Oh. Dr. Gray's office, all to myself. Let's see if we can figure this guy out. I have finished tidying up Miss Beauregard's belongings. I will leave it to you to contact her agent and have them collect her things. I found one of Grace's drawings she might want back, along with this key in her room, which I believe you've been looking for. Miss Got that last time. This is new, right? McCaffrey's pirate treasure. This is where McCaffrey has hidden my favorite young. It's very important. Okay. Interesting. Dearest. But this happened again. Is this puzzle just permanently bugged? This happened last time as well. This puzzle doesn't unlock. It can't be a different puzzle, right? No, we're right here. 
This is the second time that has happened. Hold on, we gotta try something. Uh, 336. One and a half minutes. We're just gonna speed run our way to that safe and see what happens if we. This is a, okay. We, this is when, we, when we've already done it. So no, it doesn't help. Strange. Very strange that that puzzle just doesn't work. It makes us worry, because like, there's an achievement to unlock everything in this game. Does that mean that we missed the achievement again? Sorry, trophy. Okay, so this is not where we use that thing. Thing. Hey, we're full jack in the box. Keeps respawning. There's something missing. I already got that. Okay. Let's think. What items do we have? First the Harkin stairwell key. Let's start with the stairwell. We're gonna unhook the door to the stairwell maybe. Good. I'm gonna start by going up, see if we can enter the attic. I remember if we're allowed in the attic right now or not. Oh, we still up can't open the attic. Interesting. We can't interact with the door. That is a bit strange. go in this way okay and if we could do that assembly as well and we just missed it unspeakable cults unlocked their seto stands on a breeding ground for the grotesque a temple devoted to rebellious growth the most ugly and cancerous side of nature you may be able to shield your psyche for a while but rest assured, your soul will come to pray to that hideous god in time. That is the story of every man and woman who gather around that ancient arbor. They all croak, bark, and bleat because their own bodies are afraid and they wish to repel the evil those words conjure. Ia! Ia! Instead of that blasphemous name, they gossip in hush whispers the name of their seto, Astarte, and the Black Goat of the Woods. Again, that's an ah, not an ah. It should be yeah, yeah. But Americans don't. <laughs> oh, this game was made by Swedish people, but but it's 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 a common Lovecraftian thing. 
Oh. This is different. I need the key. Radiography. Hey. Hypothetical. We're gonna do the radiograph thing here. But do we just skip a bunch of optional stuff? Because then we might need to reset. We have a save file in that, if that's the case. What's it better to say? Dr. Gray was somehow mixed up in this business with the dark man, Detective Conley decided. He had to be. Either Dr. Gray was using the idea of the dark man to manipulate... Okay, no, we need to do all the things. It's just that we can do it in any order. That is actually kind of surprising. Oh, this is not the right one, is it? No, it's not. The... Huh? Oh, okay. No. Which one of these is which one which one is wrong? Wrong actually. No wait, this one this one should be on the bottom. Like Uh no. Okay, let's start over. Let's go with this one instead. there it's that is the like, that is front of a brain pretty sure accurate it's accurate Then the other ones don't fit, so it can't be accurate.
Oh, that's where it goes. Okay. That would make... That one? Oh. No, it was... Okay. That puzzle is tricky. Yay! We got the... Um, the Cothonian. Dr. Gray had been putting Jeremy through. All right, and the rest of that statue is in the attic, right? I remember now. Left in this laboratory. Hmm. I don't know if we can even like do any more down here. <laughs> no, okay, we've been locked out. We we're in a in a non-exploration sequence. Okay. Uh this is the boat. Right? Maybe? Boat? Why does this keep happening? What am I supposed to do? Also, we just realized that it's it's not too unlikely that uh, Bondi has been in the war. So maybe maybe it's all the same sequences. And it's all just unique puzzles that get you a different ending. Let's go find out. Really? Oh, right. Going up here. Oh. And we're back here. Perfect time to have a look around this place. This is the boat, right? We're gonna be doing the boat now. What is that? Before we're gonna do the boat, let's go um, try and solve the Grace puzzle, shall we? I suppose the ore doesn't really matter. We're gonna have to do it anyway, right? Or do we? See, we don't remember what the other thing triggers. So... Do that. We just don't want to miss any... Uh, crucial line yet. Uh, okay, so that means we should go to... main hall we haven't had the whole um, sequence down there yet either where it turns into you know
Yeah, so that's the dark man scene. No, no. That was the scene that we theorized was what decided the ending. Which it does not. Surprisingly neat. Maybe I've been selling that old barfly short. Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside. Sometimes I think this place may be oh, that one. Looks like He's like a screwdriver. Okay, so there should really be something here. Um, there's the light bulb thing, we suppose, but surely there must be something more. I can't even interact with this. We're not sure the light bulb is a thing in Edward's version of the story. Find out. Did the drawing say? Okay. We don't have the, wait, we don't have the key to the empty room? I can't take this much more. This has to end. I think we explored this properly last time because of us just kind of leaving and crossing the um, room to reset. I was not finding anything. Guess we have to do the attic first then. Huh. Odd. Well, let's do it then. What if we did the other way around as Emily? Maybe only Emily can do the other way around. 
Maybe Emily has to do the other way around. But, but yeah, we were pretty sure that we did the hustle and roof room first. Right? We don't even know anymore. 641. Done with the attic. What's the room behind there? You can you get there? Guess not. Map is of no use here. Okay. Yeah, let's do the both done. Hang on, Jeremy. I'll figure something out. I'll get the boat running. Okay. Jeremy was calling out for help. And we're doing the boat now. Okay, let's do the boat then. Boat is where the most annoying enemies are, but fine. We're easy this time, so it shouldn't be a problem. We reload everything? Yes. Cool. What's that? Full drink. The boat's wedged itself right into the bayou. If I get the motor started, I could try reversing back into the river. Jeremy, where are you? Remember too much about the layout of this. I did decide if we should stop and like finish this tomorrow or something, but at the same time, we're not that tired. Well, you know where to go and what to do. I'm playing on easy. This does go by pretty fast, and so maybe we should just finish it tonight. Maybe not. If we finish this part and we get to the start of Edward's personal drama thing, that could be a good place to do the rest of it. 
from maybe and we can do a shorter stream to finish the game that might work honestly have, have we known how little was left Emily's story after the last stream, we probably would have just, you know, finished it on that stream, but we didn't know, so it seemed like it was going to be more. Fucker! Where was the, um... It was the po the fire poker weapon. <laughs> it's kind of amazing that that's a weapon now. The original game. So we're pretty sure that all the things that we're running around doing now, the reason we're not finding anything is because it's all collectible from already picked up. Like... I'm trying to get worried, like, what about the collectibles we haven't gotten yet? It's gonna really suck if you play through this game twice on stream and don't get the proper ending, you know? Well, if so, we might just look it up and then just get to the point of that and do like a separate stream or something. We'll see. We we're supposed to get got our answer, but how can people say this game is only six hours long? Because if you know what you're doing, and you just ignore all the optional stuff, and just cruise past everything, that... Then yeah, I guess you can beat it in six hours. No problem. Even less. Because we're almost back to where we were at the um, start of the stream, and we only played Carnby's story for about four hours. Yeah. Still, Emily's story took over eight hours for us to beat. And that was not counting the time between reloads, because it doesn't count that time. The game needs to be any longer, for that matter. Like, fucking survival horror game. Most recent Evil games are not longer than that either. With some exceptions, and often they tend to feel like they drag on a bit too long.
We're just gonna avoid the enemies because they're so annoying. You jump down here? Okay, yeah, you can. For like a bonus item. Yeah, this is for a bonus item. Are these meant to be like Chthonians with shells or something? Like, what are they? After this is where the uh, fourth wall breaking became clear and we got the... Yamamosa's Island file scene, you know what I mean. We really should up the field of view because we keep getting owned by enemies and sliding in from left to left. Oh, a lot of bullets. The stream keeps dropping out? What? It's working fine on our end. We have the stream on our phone. You sure? I haven't lost any frames in OBS for like several hours, so it'll be fine. No words, you're not the first person to mention it. Years ago, Frederick needed me to die. You're not making any sense, Jeremy. Come on. Find hey. your focus. Hey! I cheated everyone. I didn't play my part. Hey! I 
escaped hey. my doom. A destiny. Again, find hey. your focus. Hey, I'm right here. What the hell is going on? Oh, everything is wrong. Nothing is in play. Hey. I'm right here. Calm down, Mr. Convy. What do you want? Did... Were you... Were you not talking to Jeremy right now? I haven't seen Jeremy all day. Are you all right, Detective? No. Actually, actually, I don't... I don't think so. Well, maybe. I'm gonna go... look for Jeremy. Good. Let me know if you find him. <sighs> so annoying that this puzzle doesn't work. This remains okay. That didn't happen when we played with Emily, did it? Uh. Wait, what are we even supposed to do now? We don't have access to Dr. Gray's apartment. I mean, we don't have access to the empty room. Do we? What do we have? No, we don't have any keys. We're so confused now. We can just go in here now? Nine six X X X L A. Know the combination. I carry it with me. Six nine two.
Or coin from the town, Luciana. Look for the girl. Detective, I have made many discoveries in my case. The child we want is safe, thanks to good people like me and you. We are so similar, but you don't see all the things I do. To find your man, Jeremy, you also need to look for the girl. It has always been that way. The young deliver us all. You should have a look in my room. There's a piece of the puzzle you will need. Take care now. My coffee. What time is it? 1 a.m. How long have I been here? Can we stop here for now? How long was the last two streams we did? Game. Four hours, four hours, this one is five hours, and there's like maybe two and a half hours left of the game, tops, plus looking at pre-release stuff, um, yeah, let's stop here for tonight, actually. Uh, we are in love with this game. It is so good. And uh, next stream, we're wrapping it up. Look forward to that. It's going to be a fun little celebration of the game. Uh, we're going to finish the game. Uh, ideally, the real story ending. We're going to look up ahead of time to make sure that we can get it. Um, and then we're going to look at the game's development history. Well, what little we know at least. And uh, maybe we'll do some other things. Depends on how much time we have if we finish the game. Thank you so much for watching. As always, we appreciate you all. Please leave a like on the video if you haven't. And if you want to support us, it would be very helpful. Uh, we have a Patreon, a coffee, and a PayPal. Links are on screen and in the description. Special thanks to Anna, Bean, Emily, Garden, Hada Hase, Yus, Kickstubs, Loose Queen, Michael Rosendom, Miss Nixie, Moto, Rain, Rum Ray, Sega Music, Shadow Winchester, Sean Peterson, Spider Rebel News, and the Coyote for giving us something this past month. Uh, love you all. Take care. Good night.